And hello and welcome to Karen Rolton Oval for the final of the National Premier Cricket 2018-19 T20. And we're in for an interesting granny. It's going to be Carlton from Victoria taking on the University of Queensland from Brizzy. Umpires heading out for the start of this game. Jerry Matabiri and Eloise Sheridan. Jerry from Zimbabwe and Eloise, a local girl from Adelaide. Cloudy conditions here in Adelaide for this final, around 17, 18 degrees. And uh, we've nearly reached the maximum of around 19. As you can see, the Uni of Queensland boys are heading out into the field. Here's the toss from a little bit earlier. And Dominic Michael there on your left. And uh, Evan Golbus on the right. Up she goes. And the call was, I think, tails from Dom. And he decided that... Uh, He'd like to have a field first, and uh, well, we'll have a look at the teams very, very shortly. Everyone shaking hands, wishing one another good luck. Of course, Carlton winning the semi over Sutherland and Melville being done by the University of Queensland. Let's have a look at the Carlton lineup. Evan Golbus, fresh from his 100 in the semi final, second leading run getter in the competition. Tom Smythe got 72nd in the semi, got a 50 on this ground yesterday, and their bowling attack. A very good setup there with Aaron Smiley, Eddie O'Sullivan with his spinners, and the experience of Cameron Stevenson. Paul Bonds is in commentary with me, and he'll have a look at the Uni of Queensland side. Yes, uh, lads, welcome, and should be a great final. Uh, Uni of Queensland at the top of the order, Phillipson and Cardi, and but really the spinners were fantastic in the earlier game here on Karen Rolton, with Sale and Coetzee doing the job and keeping the runs down to a minimum. Made that run chase pretty easy in the end. So about to get things underway. There's Evan Golbus, who's the captain of Carlton. 107 off 56 in the semi-final. Made over 200 runs in this competition. Played very well yesterday. He made 61 off 49. Hit the uh, winning runs in their victory over Dandenong. And it's going to be the young spinner, Nick Sale, who earlier in the day, Bonds bowled particularly well from the far end. He certainly did. He was very economical and also picked up a wicket. So he'll be looking to do exactly the same. Doesn't take very long between his overs. Gets through them quickly. And doesn't toss the ball up too often. Four overs, one for 18. Bowled very well. His first two overs went for six in the semi. And uh, didn't get hit for a boundary till the last ball he bowled in the um, 15th over. Drew Porter whacked him way over long on for six. Golbus, look at him. Strong man. In form. Captain of this Carlton side, plenty of experience. And we're about to get underway for the first ball of this inaugural National Premier League Cricket T20 Grand Final. Sale to bowl to Golbus. Mentioned the umpires, Eloise Sheridan and Jerry Matabiri. Matabiri at the uh, bowlers end there on your screen. And joining Evan Golbus is Braden Stepien as we watch the first ball off the pad down the leg side. Chase for Mitchell Fry, the Uni Queensland keeper, and they should get a leg by. There goes the umpire. So a run on the board first up. One thing we did see from this Queensland Uni University team in the first game was their ground footing was excellent. Uh, they they had some work to do. They dropped yeah. a couple of cat catches early, but they stayed with the game and the ground footing kept them in the game. And in the end, they got the win. So here we go. Braden step in. The lefty pushes that one out to mid wicket. No run. Had a bit of rain in the uh, semi final, but the conditions for this final should be okay weather wise. No rain forecast for this afternoon as that one's pushed into the offside. Quick single into the gap. So step in off the mark with a single off his second delivery. Pretty much a ring field. For this first over of sale. Two players out on the leg. Colbus works that one around to the leg side. One of the two men in the deep in this opening power play of six overs. Only two fielders allowed outside the 30 yard circle. So two men going back on the leg side for the left hander. You're right about him getting through the overs quickly, Bonds. Doesn't muck around as that one's pushed to mid-wicket. Fielded there by the skipper, Dominic Michael. So good start here for the Union Queensland. Last ball, the opening over coming up. 
Square driven. Oh, well fielded at that backward point. Oh. And a poor throw. They should get an extra here. A little bit unnecessary there from Jack Clayton. A little bit nervous, perhaps, coming into the side. He didn't play in the semi-final. And an unnecessary uh, overthrow there. So it's none for four after the first. Well, he saved four, but then he gave away one. So <laughs> he did. Uh, might have cost his team just a single. But Evan Gold was yesterday. He was excellent at the start. He just played the anchor role while, while Smythe was going hammer and tongs. And in the end, when needed, he started a big hitting himself. And some clever batting, tucking the ball around the corner to find a boundary and putting away the bad ones. It was a measured innings, Bonds, at one stage. 12 singles in a row. He assessed the situation well. Finished up with 61, not out off 49 balls. And made sure that um, he got his team over the line in that important game in the afternoon yesterday, which ensured they were two from two and guaranteed a semi-final spot. So second over, Tom Carty's going to bowl from the Henley Beach Road end. Mr. Pan can't find the gap in the offside. Went for a few in the first game today, the semi. Three overs, one for 35. Yeah, the first couple of overs went for a few runs, but... And he came back, got a wicket late in the game. And back with the ball in his hand. He's hoping, probably just couldn't quite get his lines right early. And the batters took advantage of him. Mr. Pian pushes it to cover. No chance for a run there. The captain again, moving quickly to the ball. Dominic Michael. So good start here from Cardi. That's Tom Cardi bowling. I want to mention it was Jack. It's Tom, and he actually didn't do a bad job. Well, two hours for 10. So um, he did a good job in those late stages of the semi. Two dot balls to start, going well. Down leg side, and they'll be a wide, the first of this innings. They're very disciplined, the University of Queensland bowlers in the early game. Bowl to their fields. Well, captain by Dominic Michael. Come on in, Tommy Cart. And they sort of a few quivers towards the end of their batting innings, but did enough to get across the line. And we'll repeat of the previous, another wide. Taken there by Mitchell Fry, who in the uh, Sent me a bit earlier, fortuitously performed a stumping off his knee. Bit not, that, not that easy to do. Not something you can just purpose. plan, is it, uh, Bonds? <laughs> it was very handy stumping at the time. Fraser Hay, the uh, slightly unlucky victim. So number for six. Pretty circumspect start here. Another dot out to cover. The uni boys be pretty happy with this. Yeah, very watchful early. Two Carlton players. And as you mentioned, coming off a, a big total. 200 plus. And the oval out the back here. And three for 219 off 19 overs. It's hitting the ball okay. It's fair going. Step in, just uh, hogging the strike here at the moment. Just can't get that run as that one's played. Cleverly down to five leg. And his first boundary, the first boundary of the innings for Carl. Again, some intelligent batting. Just got tied down a little bit, a couple of wides. And stepped across his stumps. You'll see here on the replay. Ball on or outside off stump, just helped it on its way. So unprotected boundary down at fine leg. So if you've just joined us, Uni of Queensland won the toss, selected to field first. Carlton in strike, number for 10 in the second over. Just played away back with a point. Again, another dot ball. Fielded there by Jack Clayton, who comes into the uh, Uni of Queensland side at the expense of Paul Woodford, who played in the semi. And uh, Carlton are unchanged from their semi-final victory over Sutherland. So the morning semi, which we covered, Melville being beat by Union Queensland with a ball to go, four wickets in hand. So Tom Carty, can he finish off? Stepan looks to get that away, and a good over there. Just six off it, 
couple of wides and a boundary. So the score no wicket for 10 after two. And um, you're watching all the action live on cricket.com.au via the YouTube channel as well. And uh, I'm sure on phones and devices all around the place. I yeah, hope you enjoying the coverage. This is the National, National Premier T20 Championships live from Karen Rolton Oval in Adelaide. And here's some highlights from this morning. As Mitch Fry put the ball over the fence to claim victory with one ball to go. Third over underway. Goal was overcome down to the boundary. So he's not worried about not having the strike. Rips into sail and a boundary for Carlton. Good use of the feet there by Evan Golbus. Just coming down the track a little bit, turned into a half volley and over the top of cover to get his boundary hitting underway. Yeah, cracking shot. Took his head over the ball, powered his arms through the line of the delivery. Moves to five. Goes again along the ground this time. Good fielding there at extra cover. Ben Davis doing well, diving to his left, saving three runs. Nice bit of work. It was a highlight earlier in the day, as I mentioned already, the ground fielding of this uni team. So Braden step in on six, ten deliveries. Pushes that one into the offside. So, good response there after the first couple of balls. Four and a one. Did well in the semi earlier today. One for 18 off four. And again, nicely bowled. Been impressive, hasn't he, Nick Sale? Keen to get on with it. Yeah, runs back to his mark. Pull shot. Straight to the fielder. And he'd almost be happy to give him a single here. Get him up the other end for the next over. Look at him go. Nick Sale. He's in a hurry. He wants to get the next flight home. Well, well bowled again. They'll get a single. So pretty tidy over. Gave up a boundary off the first ball. Just the two singles from the rest of the over. So 16 without loss, Carlton. Golbus on six. Only faced the four balls. Step in. Seven off 14. So he's a um, little bit on the slower side. And Nick Sale, two overs for nine, has started well. Once again, he was two over six in the semi. Just a circumspect start for the Carlton boys. Important in any T20 game to keep wickets, wickets intact in the power play. You, just because the field's up doesn't mean you want to throw your wicket away. Well, the interesting thing too is Bonds is getting the right people on strike in this situation. Evan Gold must be champing at the bit to face as many balls as he can with the field restrictions in place. So Tom Carty, he bowled well. First over, going for just six in again. Driven to point, no run. Good work from Uni there in the offside. Good bit of fielding there by Michael Phillipson. And the dot balls just build the pressure on Stepien as he needs to rotate the strike, as you said, Loz. A couple more dot balls, and then all of a sudden, a rash shot comes. He's faced 15 deliveries. We've only scored off four of them. So that's 11 dots, Bonds. That's too many in this power play that aren't scored off. And he gets a single this time. So Golbus is going to get some strike. So of the 20 balls bowled so far, he's only faced four Golbus for his six. And this is where you can make a rash decision. And you haven't had a lot of strike, but Golbus is an experienced campaigner. We saw him yesterday play particularly well, but that was in a small run chase. So he's coming off 100 in the semi. Big partnership with Tom Smythe. They added 153. Not an awful lot of balls, was it, either? Lots Wouldn't have been more than 13. 60 balls. 13 overs tops, maybe 12 overs tops. Look at the exact figures, but it wasn't, wasn't a lot. So, Golbus in strike. Cuts that one. Backward point. They'll take the fielder on, and they're home. Throw coming in there from backward point. Clayton, who's uh, fielded a couple of balls so far. Let's have a look at the replay, see how close it was. 
Good gather from Clayton. Shy at the stump and probably been touch and go with a direct hit. Big dive from Step In. It's a good start from Cardi. Yeah, he's done well here. All oh, clever batting. Fine legs up. That'll go for four. Just short of the rope. One bounce. Uh, four to step in his second boundary moves up to 12. That's twice he's played that shot now. Again, going over to the offside. And almost went all the way for a six. So he got a good piece of that one. Just one bounce and over the rope. Smart batting. It was good stuff. Cardi in again. Pushes that into the offside. Taking on the field and no problems at all there for a single. But again, a relatively tidy over this from Cardi. Still one to come. Number 24, Carlton. Last ball, the over. Cardi bowls. Golbus drives in the air. Out towards the uh, cover boundary. And that should run down the hill. So Golbus starting to find the boundary. And a good over for the Blues. 11 off it. And then up for 27 off four. Well, what we have seen, Laurie, is this able has got a little bit of sun on it for the last hour or so. And it's definitely quickened up. That has raced away to the boundary. He's a class act, Evan Golbus. Crowd here will be enjoying every second of this T20 final. The national premier T20 champs from Karen Rolton Oval in Adelaide. This is the Cricket Network. Hope you're enjoying it. Laurie Colliver and Paul Bonds are in the commentary box. Jen Wallace is with us today as well. Jen's champing at the bit to get on shortly. We've got Graham Manu coming up very soon too. He's obviously played the one test match for Australia, but he's now the Pathways Manager for Cricket Australia and had a lot to do with getting this tournament off the ground so hopefully he'll join us in the next uh, period of play a bit of a chat about everything and we've got to change of bowling the first one from the the far end Jono Kurtzia by well in the semi one for 24 if he's four he's going to come into the attack to bowl the fifth over and there's a run or two through the offside good timing there from the left hander and that'll race down the hill for four more so good batting Stepien starting to find his rhythm and that was a good shot. Certainly was. Head over the ball. Punched it through the field. And as I said, this able to just quick it up a little bit. Good dive for the cameras, that one. It was. Saves you chasing it too. Was that one forced into the offside. Calls of no. As all filtered there by Nick Sale. There's that dive again. Tom Carty. Short, pulled in the air, back with a square leg, out to the boundary four. Well, it's another four. So the left-hander here starting to really get into it. He's hit three fours of his last four deliveries and uh, just making up for a slow start, Bonds. Certainly is. Now, he got a bad ball there, really. Too short, on leg stump. He just put it away, so he should. Number 35 in the fifth over. And up to mid wicket. Nicely played, fielded there by the Union of Queensland captain Dominic Michael, just motioning to one of his lads that he's on next as this one is forced down towards long on for a single. And that's all it will be. Michael fielding a lot of balls in this inning so far. Probably saved a single there, Michael, by cutting that off. Probably would have taken two if you just let it roll down to long on there. None for 36 currently here. If you've just joined us, in New Queensland, won the toss, sent Carlton into bat. So Golbus facing up to the spin of Kutzia. Makes room, pumps it through the offside. Another boundary for the Blues. 
Good shot. So three boundaries in that over. And the score moves up to no wicket for 40. And now joining us in the commentary position for Rosie Test Keeper and now Pathways Manager for Cricket Australia, Graham Manu. I'll get Jenny Wallace in there as well, mate, just to uh, we'll get your chair. How are you, Chop? Going all right? Yeah, very well yourself. You'd be happy how the last couple of days have gone, mate? Yeah, extremely pleased and, and proud of all the work that's gone in behind the scenes. We've had a lot of support from the SACA in particular, so a um, little bit nervous before the last couple of days, but um, been really impressed by the quality of play and the spirit in which the players have played it. And yeah, look, we're, we're going to leave having set a really good foundation, I think, for this competition in years to come. And you're more than welcome to keep playing it in Adelaide too, Graham, as uh, Devon Endersby's into the attack by the final over the power play. And good batting there by Stepan, just dropping it into the offside. We see a lot of these sort of comps in England. Um, a bit easier to get around in some ways in the UK with trains and not having the necessity to fly everyone in. I mean, that's probably the biggest cost of the whole thing and, and just getting it at the right time of the season, I suppose, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Scheduling's um, difficult at the best of times, but um, that's why we chose Adelaide, because it's certainly a lot easier to get around. We hold a lot of our underage national championships here and the facilities, you can see, it's, it's very easy from a talent ID perspective. As this one's just pushed into point and a single taken by Gulbis. His score goes up to 16. Continue, Chuck. Yeah, so, you know, having it in a location where you've got four very, very good ovals in the one spot and then having the luxury of being able to play on Adelaide Oval number two, which is really a, a good drive and a, maybe a seven iron away from here certainly helps. So, <laughs> now we go for 42. Graham Manu joining us in commentary. So Stepien tries to get creative at the crease there. Look like he was going to go through with another one of his, his ramps or paddle sweeps, and then the ball was delivered wide, so went back to a cut. And the, the response from all the clubs involved has been pretty good, I imagine, Graham? Yeah, so far it's been really positive. Um, you know, it's not often that uh, club cricketers get this opportunity, and... You know, to come away with, with some of your mates, you can form lifelong memories from trips like these. Steps away and tries to cut again. This time they've brought up third man, so there's a chance on for a, a run out. Goal was too quick. Step in by name and by nature as well as he moves up to 23. No, nah, it's good, and you, you get the chance to see someone like Evan Goldbus here who's played BBL. He can pass on his info to other young players, not only within his own setup, but with. Um, Opposition with you know the function the other night, obviously. Um, good setup there, a nice photo in front of the scoreboard and that sort of stuff. So it's good to see this event has finally got through and may it long continue as you watch the sixth over continue. Cool, this cuts hard, doesn't beat point. One of the things that I found interesting, I'm heavily involved in club cricket scene in Perth, and it the male cricket always seems to have a fairly good following, but by having this little carrot at the end of it the intensity went up as to how the club format was followed and how it was promoted as well, which we'd always talk about if you can see it, you can be it. And this reminds people that club cricket reminds a really valuable thing to be involved in. Yeah, uh, yeah I think you hit it right in the head there. It is one of the most valuable parts of our pathway. Um, you know, everyone has to play at a premier club to play for Australia. Last ball, the power play. Bit of an ugly spot from Gorbis there. Dive, it's a direct hit. What's going to be the answer here? No, he's made it safe. Good piece of fielding, but equally a good dive in from Stepien, showing some desire to hold on to his wicket there. So look at the replay. And there's been good over from him, just the four runs. With a crook bounce there. The throw looks right on line, and he's well home. Nicely thrown. And again, we see another power play where not a lot of wickets fall. None for 44. So a good springboard here for Carlton. And uh, judging by the... The scores, Graham, here, going to need about 160, 170, I reckon, to, to, to come out on top in this final. Yeah, I think, um, you yeah, know, we've seen from Carlton already that they've had uh, a, a sound ability to judge their innings quite well. And as you say, having someone like Gulbis in their side brings a wealth of experience and, and knowledge, particularly in this format. So, yeah, I expect, you know, 160, 170 would be uh, absolute par on this ground. Change of the bowling, Jen. Jack Carty into the attack. A little bit expensive uh, in the semi. Three overs, one for 35. He's going to bowl from the far end. We saw a lot of spin from that bottom end 
from uh, Uni of Queensland in the semi. So electing to go with pace for the seventh over from the far end. And of course, end of the power play. So the field can spread out a little bit more. Now, An interesting tactical change. Maybe they're more aware of Goulson's ability against spin. And Graham, you'd have fond memories. You played in the grade final for Richmond from memory. Is that right? When you moved to Melbourne? I'll get your answer in a sec. I think my memory's right as we watch this first ball. Yes, you've got a good memory, Laws. You always have and always <laughs> will. Um, yeah, played, I guess, three quarters of a season when I moved to Melbourne for Richmond. Fantastic club and um, we were really fortunate to, to win the premiership that year. Ryan Carter's made 100 in the final and um, we beat Danny Nong at the, the Junction Oval. So it was a really good experience for me to, after spending so long in one system, to see another. So Cardiani's hit hard and strong. That's gone flying back past here in the umpire. They've done well to get out of the way there as it's crashed into the black panelling at the end of the ground. Yeah, you can't set a field to that. Straight back over the keeper, uh, over the umpire's head there. Jerry Matabiri getting out of the way pretty smartly. And the score moves up to 48. And uh, you had a few other rogues in that side too. A couple other South Australians in that yeah, team, wasn't there? Andy Delmont in that side? Andy Delmont, yes. This one just worked into the point region. They'll take the easy one. Gorgas has been really good at this in the times that we've seen him going up and down his gears he looks regularly. In, looks in good shape, Jen. And uh, obviously, talking about the Junction Oval, Chalk, that's another great thing that's evolved in the last 18 to two years, 18 months to two years, just the arrangements there now. And yeah. fair chance they're going to host the Shield final, the Vic. So it'll be an ideal venue for um, the finish of that uh, competition. We'll get your thoughts on that in a tick. Great setup. So then step in outside edge, safely down to third. Yeah, it's um, you know it's a fantastic facility now, and most states are sort of heading down that path, and rightly so, um, with both the professionalisation of male and female uh, side of things. You know, you need those sorts of high class, high quality um, facilities, and obviously the way that stadium management um, works now to have a ground like they do in Melbourne where it's so wholly and solely a cricket ground is, uh, is we're really fortunate as, as a sport. So Golbus in strike on 22. This one driven again. He does take on mid off. Doesn't decide to throw it. And Graham, with the, the tournament going the way it has the last couple of days, the positive feedback we've all been receiving for it. Does this seem like a lock for next season? And if so, What's the, the next ramica What's it going to look like next? Uh, well, it's certainly not a lock. I, I hope it is based on feedback um, that we've received. It's a wild swing play to me. So he's got the under edge, has he? They've asked the question. And, and he he's been given it. Has carried. I'm just conferring to see if it carried. It has. So great catch there from Fry. Diving forward. Not easy to do. You can probably talk us through this on the replay. Go on, Chalk. Chalk. Let her rip. Oh, what do I, what do I say here? It's a <laughs> under edge. Good position and, oh, yes. No problems there, no, was there? No. How hard are they People to catch coming forward, Grant? Oh, you, very not easy, that very easy, easy just in the middle. He did a very good job there. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. So, good catch there for Mitchell Fry. Braden Step being out for 25 from 28 deliveries. 51 for the first wicket. Seven overs completed. And the danger man, Tom Smythe, coming in. We saw him yesterday whack a very... Brutal innings of 51 off 26 deliveries. He got 77 off 47 earlier in the day. Looks a class player, one of the better players going around in this competition. And these two put on 153 this morning in the semi. Let's have a look at the highlights from yesterday. Really took control of this run chase. They only had to get 139. And he came out for the word go, Jen, didn't he? And went whack, whack, whack. Some of those shots straight down the ground. Yeah, we haven't seen many better uh, in our couple of days here. A lot of people have been hitting square nicely, but he went straight a lot, and it was really enjoyable to watch. Did you plant a flag at Northern Districts, Chop? You did too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So well, that's pretty handy. Two different states, two different grade premierships. Not too many blokes could boast that in their careers. And uh, it begs the question, you've been involved with some pretty good clubs over the years. More after the first ball from Endersby. Ducks out of the way. Um, just on that, volunteers. You mentioned in your, your little write-up in the book here, um, you just can't put a price on the value of volunteers. All the cricket we've all yeah. sort of played over the years between a lot of us in the box here, but 
it's such a crucial part of the making. Oh, isn't it? Absolutely, you know they're the heartbeat of of any club, and in particular Premier Club, where you know it's on a on a higher level than in comparison to say a community club. So obviously, with um, you know with the shift in the game, the amount of uh, time spent at grounds. The three different formats, the demands of, of what we expect of, of club cricket now, finding good people to stick around um, go, is a very difficult task. And when you've got a good volunteer, you know, it's up to people like myself and others in sports administration to make sure that we're providing a good avenue maybe for their progression if they wanted to get into sport more full time or, or just to make their life easier. Mm. Seeing Gulbis when he completed that single sort of head down i wonder whether the the work of the next last couple of days is just starting to to fatigue him slightly uh, i haven't seen him miss hit many balls over the tournament that one he played nicely off the middle down for the single we might keep an eye on him over the next few balls to see if he's trying to up the gears at all Anders be enders be in for the fourth this one has flicked off the hip nicely. A bit of work to do for back finally. They won't be able to get there. So lovely four runs for Smythe, who we've said it before and we saw it in the highlights. He has been hitting them really well. So one of the poor cameramen out there getting such great pictures for us. Almost wore that one. Yeah, off the mark straight away. Got off to a cracking start yesterday in the match against Danny on 27 off his first nine. And that's a very neat shot to the fine leg boundary. Here's our cameraman getting all the shots and nearly getting cleaned up down there as well <laughs> at the same time. Kept his focus nicely. Did beautifully. This one just worked around to square leg just in front of it so they'll get another easy single there just off the back of a boundary. Is there anything more we can do, Graham, about this volunteer thing? Because, as you say, there's so many other sports when we first started playing cricket, and you too, Jen, you're sort of my vintage. When you start, you've got all these people around that help, but then you find out you've lost a couple and you, you don't know the reason why. Can we do more to retain these guys and girls that and parents that help out? What do you reckon? Yeah, look, through the um, Premier Cricket Development Program, there's certainly ways and means that we can, we can help, help volunteers. Um, you know, I think there's certainly an avenue to bring um, technology into um, play more. Um, but again, you need to be a bit more mindful of, of you know, being able to cater for all age groups when, when you're looking at bringing something like that in. But um, I think one of the, the biggest pieces is retention of players. You know, we find a lot of um, volunteers today, are there actually. because of of their sons or their daughters so um, if we are providing a compelling package in terms of what players are able to do in on the ground um, whether it be formats or or you know double headers male female these sorts of things then um, yeah i think we'll, we'll find a, a way to keep some really good people in the game good boundary there to Golbus. he's on 28 from 17 balls one for 61 after eight Yes, I think the, the volunteer thing's the key thing as we progress along. I mean, Jack Cardi to bowl the ninth. Two overs, one, for, or one over one for seven so far. There's a quick single taken on here. Throw at the stumps, just misses. I think he would have been safe even with the direct hit. So well-judged run from Smythe. And just to go on from that, uh, Loz, you know, mm. part of the reason, one of the objectives of this competition was to provide another avenue for... I guess for former first-class players, you know, their exit from the game has changed dramatically now, and to be able to provide a platform like this to want to keep them involved with their club post their professional career is um, is something that we hope to see grow out of this competition. You know, we've seen Watson um, be heavily involved with his club through T20 cricket, and you know, Golbus is here, obviously, and there's. Um, Jason Flores, who yep. lives in Brisbane and travels down to Canberra because his brothers are there Wants and that's where his he's from. And yep. Yep. So these sorts of things will be really important in our thinking to just continue to evolve both from a male and female perspective. Very good. So a little mix up there between Golbus and Smythe there. Getting sick of batting together, these two. They've dominated this competition. Played well yesterday, also in the semi where they put on 153. This one, Jeff's worked, he's tried to work to third man and all he's done is put it through to the keeper. Lovely take from Fry, he's taken two good dismissals. And that's the, the end of 
the leading run scorer for the tournament. That's a massive wicket for University of Queensland. Yeah, key wicket for them. Another good catch for the keeper. He's having a good game, Mitchell Fry. The first one was low. This one was to his right. Moved beautifully into position. And uh, no doubt, Ram, as a former keeper yourself, old boy, you would have enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, very good catch, actually. He's moving quite well. Um, I've watched him a couple of games, and... He's done a terrific job through the tournament, so yeah, you love pouching those ones. Disappointment for Evan Golbers, 28 off 19 deliveries, five fours in that innings. So Carlton under a little bit of pressure here now. And the new batsman is Nick Ross, coming in at number four. Didn't have a lot of work to do yesterday in the match against Dan Denong, finishing with a dozen or so off 19 balls. So he's gonna have to come in here and play an important role. Halfway through the ninth, two for 62. Yeah, I think that really opens the door for Queensland in the sense that it's the back of the leading run scorer and he's done a lot of damage for them. They haven't actually had to use many of their batters in these previous three games. It's a bit of a problem when you win so well. The other guys don't get a hit as we watch him about to face his first ball from Jack Carty. He's got two for eight in his second. He's had a ripping game so far. And five inside the circle. So the extra man up. just defended back bit of pep in his step Cardi after taking that big wicket and you can hear the the banter from keeper fry and the other other players especially in the inner circle just trying to keep each other up it's a testing sort of tournament back-to-back -back games on back-to-back -back days they're yeah, remembering this is you know most most everyone here would have taken a couple of days of work off to come and do this Ross over his bat this time and just tries to push into the offside but doesn't beat point. Yeah, it certainly gives them a little insight into, you know, what the elite teams are, are going through. Um, had a conversation with Roy Formica, who's the New South Wales Premier Cricket Manager, and Sydney Uni had played both Saturday and Sunday and then on a flight Monday yes. um, and straight into the, the championship. So. Yeah, they had the 50 over final Sunday yeah. up there, didn't they, as we watched the last ball this over. Easy single out into the offside. But yeah, so they've had a real good look at what it's like to be a touring player playing Saturday, Sunday, pack your bags, clean all your gear, pack your bags, get on the plane Monday, and back to back games again when you're over here. And everyone else gathering around to watch the final. We've got a presentation a bit later, Graham. I see you got Wayne Phillips here as well. Yes. As long as he doesn't tell too many stories about that 159 in Perth, we'll all be grateful. I'm sure he'll slip it in. Oh, you know, Wayne, he. Uh, I do one of the best at talking about himself particularly that first test match innings and there he is look at him flipper shocking haircut though isn't it doesn't even know he's on camera which is good look at him there just, just tapping keeping away keeping the curls at the back there <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if he knows little... he's on camera have a look at i him. wouldn't be surprised if he's got a little plastic bag taking any of that spare food home later too <laughs> wouldn't be surprised He's got no way of answering back, so I'm going to take full advantage. <laughs> Change of bowling from the Henley Beach Road end. Jono Kutsia, who's bowled well in the two games we've covered so far. Just over went for 13, so change of ends for him. The breeze has picked up a little bit, coming from over his right shoulder, the southwest. Awesome, oh, a good bit of feeling there, Jen. Nicely worked, Devon Ensbury. That's been one of my favoured things over the tournament. I'm a big fielding fanatic, so happy to see that effort. This one around the wicket, trying to cramp him up. Still gets the cutaway, but doesn't beat backward point. Is there anything else, Graham, we should ask you about? Uh, you've got a bit to do with the underage tournaments as well. Um, anything you want to tell us about that side of the pathways uh, after this ball? Swept, swept nicely. There at square leg. We'll get around, they'll come back for a simple two. Yeah, I think the thing um, in relation to our pathway is that uh, there is a lot of talent coming through. Um, we're in the midst of uh, planning for the 2020 World Cup, which will be in South Africa in January. This one cut away again. Doesn't beat that gap. Another fantastic diving effort in the field. Who's that there at point? Nick Sale. Nick Sale. Had a good couple of days in the field, hasn't he? Been very impressive. If that gets through, that's four runs. So some vital fielding once again from Uni of Queensland. Well, some of those young blokes that have come through, I noted Baxter Holt came through and played for the Thunder 
in the BBL. One or two oh. other youngsters starting to progress and make their names better known in the uh, senior competitions. Yeah, and that's one of, I guess, the objectives of the Cricket Australia programs and the state programs um, is to ensure that the transition from, from the pathway to elite is, uh, I guess, the gap is lessening. Um, and, yeah, we, we've seen some really good uh, performances from guys like Jack Edwards, Lloyd Pope, um, and there's been some really strong performances in club cricket as well across the board from some of our, our next crop coming through. Um, you know, Mackenzie Harvey performed quite well in the BBL. Did well, yes. Uh, there's young Ollie Davies who toured Sri Lanka with the Australian under-19s in January, scored a, a club yeah! 100 recently. Well, wicket's fallen as Ross has tried to work inside that and ramp it and clean missed it so bold the keepers hunched over there in the huddle as we can see so i think he's copped the ball in the sternum let's have a look at the replay bold from around the wicket made room to the offside to uh, lap it away nick ross on his way for four so uni of queensland winning the toss and electing the field so far paying off three for 67 in 10 overs and i'm gonna have a spell you can head off shortly, Graham, if you like. Paul Bonzer might have a couple of questions for you before we uh, go. But between the overs here, it's Jenny Wallace having a chat with Graham, I know. Yeah, so it's been a, an interesting tournament. Um, for yourself, you've probably roamed around all of the, the grounds. Has there been much of a difference that you've noticed from, say, the, the way the pitches are played or the outfield size, or has it actually been quite consistent? Being? Yeah, I think it's been pretty consistent, obviously, having um, Trent Kelly, uh, the head groundsman here, oversee all all wickets. So um, the feedback on all of the wickets has been very, very positive. Um, you know, they've only gotten better today. The, the outfields are, are as good um, on the outgrounds as they are on, on Karen Rolton. So we're very, very lucky in terms of the... The facilities and, and what Trent and his team have presented. So some consistency obviously helps in a tournament like this. Understandably, as Cardi's going to return from the hospital end here. Ah! It might be a double wicket falling, and it is. Ah! The point was just cycled backwards and taken a nice catch coming over his shoulder. And two big wickets now because that's Smythe, the end of Smythe, who's been one of the other leading run scorers of the tournament. And the Uni University of Queensland, as we Welcome Bonds back into the commentary chair. It's uh, going well for them. Well, Graham, you're taking some wickets here while you beat him, mate. <laughs> <Sit. laughs> They're falling all over the place, and uh, yeah, just lost his shape. Maybe it maybe didn't pick up the pace of the ball. And Sale was very happy with his work there. A vital wicket as Tom Smythe out for seven, and now Carlton four for 67, now, ten overs. Two new batters at the crease as well, and Chuck, you've played thousands of cricket games, I'd say, in your career, and, and this is a key for any bowling side, isn't it? Have two yeah. new batters at the crease. Yeah, interesting what a little bit of pressure does, um, you know, in a final. So, uh, as you guys have highlighted already, you know, some key batters have, have probably really sort of got them to this point, so now there's a really good opportunity for some of the guys uh, in the bottom half of the order to, to get the job done now. It's going to take them a little bit to find their way, get used to the conditions. So for, for the briefest of moments there, I think we had the two Smythe brothers batting together. <laughs> so yeah. they obviously don't get along very well because <laughs> decided to get out straight away. So we've now got Harrison Smythe on strike. And Pell is our other new batter. He works this down to third man to get off the mark. Mate, you've obviously worked very hard and you, you, to you and your team need to be congratulated on what's been a fantastic tournament. Um, what's next for you? You have a little break now at the end of cricket season or, uh, or do you stick with it for a while? Yeah, I stick with it for a little bit. Um, you know, we're uh, conducting some, some coach education sessions and some specialist skills visits across the country and... It's about information sharing and, and some talent ID uh, work that we conduct. Um, and then, as I said, we're in the well, very early phases of the 12-month planning for the World Cup, so never-ending. Pearl faces his first ball from Jake Carty, who is enjoying this spell, this three-over spell since I've been on with him. He's taken three wickets 
So just three for 10 runs. And you mentioned that uh, World Cup in South Africa. So how, how far out do you look at the squad for that? For that cup? Yeah, so we, we've got a squad of around about 40 players at the moment that we're trying to provide further development opportunities for. Just drives and takes on mid-off and mid-on who comes around and backs up. So we, uh, we'll, we'll have a, a very short series in the July school holidays against New Zealand um, up in Brisbane. Uh, and then obviously we'll uh, provide some different training opportunities through the winter, both in their states and up at Brisbane at the National Cricket Centre. So there will be a bit going on in the winter, but then really it's, it's then up to them to perform for their clubs and then their state in the National Under-19 Championships. Cardi trying to close out this third over in his spell and the 11th over, and he does so with a dot. So four for 69 at the end of the 11th. Well, mate, look, thanks for coming along and joining us and having a, a few words. We really pre appreciate it. And, again, congratulations on a fantastic uh, tournament. Thanks, mate, and thank you to you guys for supporting it. Um, your commentary has been outstanding, and I know that everyone's really enjoyed the coverage both in the States. The clubs have been raving about it, so thank you to all of you guys. Great. Graham and you joining us here, and thanks, Chuck. Really appreciate it. And we've got a really good contest on our hands here, Jen, with two teams going at it. Started with Carlton just getting a, you know, a really solid start, but now they've lost a couple of wickets. Yep. And they need to get... I, I, we talk about that 150 mark, whether that's that's enough, and it hasn't yeah. been. And so it got feels like that's a, it's a long way off, that 150. Yeah. You're probably looking more around that 130 again. Um, as we okay. see, this one just driven to, to mid-off, and they take off and run with the shot. So they're going to have a lot of work to do. This Carlton batting crew again lost clumps of wickets so in, in the five overs just gone from over seven to eleven four wickets fell so the clumps of wickets so these guys need to try and string together four to five overs no wickets falling and, and provide another plant platform to launch from and try and go big Kurtz is in his fourth over now he's one for 16 Around the wicket to the right hander, it's pulled, but another good effort in the field. Well, it's just been a bit of a, a nightmare, sort of four or five overs for Carlton. Is that one's played to mid off and run through for the single. This is, in fact, his second over as the scoreboard progressed early on the over for me. I didn't realise that. <laughs> Stitch, yeah, stitched up. Loz looking after me in the background. Got to acknowledge your mistakes, don't you? Just own up. <laughs> this one, he oh, shuffles down. Out. Just yorks himself, so can't get a good hit through on that. Always found it better to pay yourself out before others do. So <laughs> get in first. That's our, that's our methodology in here. <laughs> get the banter in on yourself early. <laughs> Change in the field here is... As Sail goes out to the mid-wicket boundary. It's again, just pushed and will take the run at mid-off. Just dealing in singles since the last wicket fell. We're obviously using a different wicket now. We've, we've moved across a couple of pitches. A bit more centre of the ground. So it's not as obvious a short boundary and a long boundary. For yeah, something we didn't bring up too early. But, uh, yeah, brand new wicket for the final. This one just driven down again another single so a couple of wickets across uh, so even both both of these teams have had a chance to play here at Karen Rolton Oval they haven't neither of them have played on this wicket yeah it's the same wicket used for the Australia New Zealand ladies game what a couple of weeks ago let's go through the wickets so far today just the under edge there from Sepian and a great catch diving forward from Fry for the Queensland team and another good diving catch away to his right and that was the key wicket of Gorbis and we see Ross attempting to paddle sweep over the keeper's head just managed to end up getting bold he went too far across and then this was probably the next key wicket this guy had been going at a, a strike rate of 172 at the start of this game so the back of Smythe as he attempted to go for one too many down the ground and just a big thick outside edge good catch 
running back from point, though. So they've been good again in the field. Queensland, and importantly, holding their catches, whereas that morning game, they shelled a few, didn't they? Certainly did. And it's the skipper, Don Michael, to bring himself into the attack now from the hospital end. He's making one subtle change in the field, swapping a couple of fielders. Michael's in and it's wide and signalled so. So he's going to have to re-bowl that one, the skipper. Yeah, just one got away from him. Not the ideal start for the skipper. I'm sure we'll get that one back. This is Harrison Smith on strike at the moment. He's tried to pull that one. It's done him for pace, and the keeper's got the chase on. Will they come back for two? No. It's just the one there and signalled leg buyers. It certainly hurried up Harrison Smythe. So he was nowhere. Timing was nowhere near that. Just thundered into his gloves. That was on him in a hurry. Pell's looking for a bat sponsor. Thought the game, televised game, I better <laughs> bring out the clean skin. Hopefully I can pick up a free. Well, he's he's got the opportunity with eight overs remaining to develop his own little highlights package here. It's not often that club cricket's going to get uh, the coverage that it is getting today. So he faces Michaels now and he's cutting and cutting well. There will be a third able to come around and get to that. They'll come back for the second. A good throw might have made it interesting, but... Well judged run of two. So he can put that one in the, the highlights reel. And if he can create a few highlights, well, Carlton will be happy as well because that'll mean the score continues to go up. What do you think? We're just saying 150 was something we thought maybe at the start. Do you think there are a chance of getting to that or more? Or are we looking 135, 140? Come back to you after this. So it's flicked over the top of square leg. Just the one there is a fielder patrolling the boundary out there. I think they'll be happy to get to 150 from where they're at now. The loss of four wickets in a row uh, just, just slows the scoring and lost their two main strikers, Goldberts and Smythe. Goldberts out for 28, Smythe out for seven. So the, the bottom order, bottom middle order haven't uh, really had a hit for Carlton in this tournament. So I'm unsure about what talent they've got down there. I'm sure there's got enough to get to that 150. This one slow bounce up. Just sits up on top of it, Smythe, and punches that pull shot into the mid-wicket boundary. I think if these two can bat for the next five or six overs, you know, just to get them four down with a couple of overs to go, then I think that 150's in reach. If they lose another wicket shortly, then you're probably talking 130. Yeah, so it just again highlights the importance of partnerships, even in this shortest of formats. The partnerships are crucial, aren't they? Absolutely. Michael's around the wicket. This one's a bit wider and left alone, and it is signalled a wide, so his second ball that's erred in the over. He'll have to re-bowl that one as well, the skipper. He knew it too, just after he bowled it. He looked around to the umpire. Did I get away with that one? <laughs> uh, no, you didn't. The change in the field here as the third comes up and sail again out to that mid wicket boundary. This one's cut powerfully over the top of point and a diving effort on the fence isn't able to save it. It's just one bounce four. That was powerfully hit. First boundary we've seen in five overs. A bit of width and just laid everything into that. It almost carried to the fielder who dived. You'll see it right here in front of the camera. Almost got a hand to it. Kurt's here. So it's been a good over so far for Carlton. And he's tried to lay into that one again. Look at the way he's rocked back. Played a miss, so a dot to finish was important for Michaels. Four for 84 at the end of the 13th. And Donovan Pearl's taking himself up to 10. 
So, yeah, we haven't had very many boundaries in the last five overs, so let's uh, enjoy watching this one back and just love the way he just laid back and absolutely belted into that. This side-on view is lovely, isn't it? Look at the carry of that ball towards our camera. Yeah, great camera work again from our team here today. And hope you're enjoying the coverage on the Cricket Network. So it's the National Premier T20 Champs. And Sale is about to come back in. Nick Sale gets through his overs very quickly. It's a good bowling change from the skipper. He's been economic so far. This one's driven in the air and that's going to be caught straight to the skipper, Don Michael, there at cover. And Nick Sale picks up his first wicket and he's only gone for the nine runs and this is just the beginning of his third over. So we were just talking about the importance of partnerships building up and this one, it was worth 15 runs. And just as they were starting to get some rhythm, he's holed out to cover. Well, he's been impressive all tournament. His Nick Sale, economical and a wicket taker and he picks up his first for today straight down the throat of the skipper michael and smiles all around and it's the university of queensland starting to just edge ahead in this game yeah that they are we've seen in the three previous games here the team batting second has been successful chasing University of Queensland at the moment doing a very good job in keeping the total they're going to have to chase to as low as possible. So you see the sky panning around, it's beautiful Karen Rolton oval precinct. A lot of work gone into here recently and we started the day with sort of dark overcast conditions. Still clouds in the sky but a lot more blue and light of the sun coming through. Oh, breaking through. Right on Nick Sale is in the limelight at the moment, doing a job for his team. As Lachlan McKenna, the new batter. Sale staying around the wicket to a left-handed batter. You don't see that that often, but again, he's so good off his own bowling, the way he scampers across, isn't he? You see, we saw that in this morning's game as well. Is Agile in the field? Yeah, definitely staying around the wicket once again. Just floats this one across lovely, lovely, over the offside. Lovely. Usually see left arm spinners stay around when it's a right-handed batter, not necessarily when it's a left-handed batter. Must just feel comfortable with these lines and lengths from there. And uh, look, I'm not going to argue with him because he has not gone for basically any lovely, runs today. <laughs> He was one of the main reasons why they're in this final. As he bowled beautifully this morning as well. Yeah, correct. This one again just tries to beat. It's probably a gully or a short third. One of those spots where, hey, yeah, do you call it deep gully? Do you call it back at point? We'll just go with one of them. Another dot though. It's four in a row, including the wicket. So, first single off the over. Should be. One for ten, the completion of his three overs. He's been a great weapon for his captain to let loose on the opposition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sun shining at the moment as the blue sky breaks through the clouds. But earlier we had a bit of this. <laughs> it was pouring in the first game for about five or ten minutes. The players and umpires hung in there for a while, but then it was just got too heavy. And Trent Kelly and his ground staff here had to rush on. It was quite a big shower, but only lasted a short time. And the first game this morning was reduced to 18 overs. But no chance of that at the moment. Good to see all the players from the other clubs around Australia settling in to watch the afternoon's action. I'm sure all of them wishing that they'd been out and taking centre stage. Now they get to relax and look, celebrate the fact they made it this far. It's Michael's. It's a dot to start, so a couple of good overs here. 
off the back of Nick Sale's last over where he took a wicket and just went for the one run. Yeah, all of the players, it's, it's a hard one sometimes. You sort of remember, you think, oh, I've underperformed at this tournament. But to get to this stage, they all had to win their Correct. local tournaments. So they've all had successful T20 seasons in their own states. So I'm driven hard. It's going to beat mid on, is it? No, another great diving effort. Keeps it to a one. So saving his team valuable runs there. Jack that Cardi. Looks like Jack Cardi to me. Yep. It certainly is. He's uh, done the job with the ball and now doing the job in the field. Great work, Jack Cardi. Donovan Pell on strike. Just pushes it. So he takes off for a run. A direct hit will be out and he's missed. Michael's had time to size all three of them up. Too much time, in fact. Well, what was he thinking there? Young Pell hit it straight to Michael. Called yes. Well, it was almost the yes. Sorry, mate. Because that is just that's ludicrous running, really. Lucky yep. to get away. That was not well judged at all. This time, Michaels just pushed into the, the leg side. They're looking, running hard for two, but they're never going to get the chance to do that. Some good fielding. Once again, that sails again. But that's... <laughs> whew. John Michael will wonder how he managed to miss that. You, know, you see them in warm-ups hitting tiny little stump that's been cut down, and they're, all, they're hitting it bang, bang, bang. And this one, you see him pick it up, look at all three stumps, and he throws it right over the top. <laughs> Too much time. Full toss. Doesn't get a hold of it, so just the one. It was a quick full toss. A bit more of an effort ball from Don Michaels there. So they're running out of deliveries, Carlton, to build a competitive total here. Coming towards the end of the 15th over. Michael's in now to McKenna, who just soft hands that behind point. And they'll finish the 15th over, 5 for 90. And uh, that'll be me for this stint in the innings. So the next voice you'll hear, of course, be Laurie Culliver to join you. Thanks, Jen. Marvellous job once again. This is the National Premier T20 Champs. Live from Karen Rolton Oval in Adelaide. Jenny Wallace, Paul Bonza, and the man himself, Laurie Culliver, about to stick the headset on. Yes, indeed. Hopefully a big five overs here for Carlton. They're only going at six and over, five for 90. And uh, they've really been undone by some fine bowling kids here, doing a good job. See there, he's about to bowl his fourth over. Nick Sale, three overs, one for 10 with 11 dots. has been excellent. So uh, they're well on top here, Union Queensland. Remembering after the power play, Carlton were none for 44. So they've only scored 46 runs in the last nine overs and have lost a fifer so well on top here the uh dare i say it, the bookworms from queensland <laughs> it's here in on the leg sump and worked in the through mid wicket thought about two but hell slipped at the striker's end so they settled for one they've got key wickets too haven't they they didn't allow Golbus to have a lot of the strike early and then uh, Tom Smythe, who played brilliantly in the uh, his last couple of knocks, got out as well. So they're all on top here. Full toss this time, worked through the leg side. Fielder's going to come around and restrict it to one again. Good fielding. Been well on their game, University of Queensland. Absolutely. They've been uh, very good on the ground fielding aspect. I've conceded hardly a boundary since the end of the power play. This one swung away. That's going over the top for six. Yeah, good batting from McKenna. Five off ten. Something really had to happen. And he's whacked that one nicely over deep backward square leg. Interesting stance he's got. The ball sort of followed him in the end there. And uh, he's cleared the rope nicely. You can see the white kookaburra traveling beautifully in the sky. Have a look at it from square leg as the next ball's about to be bowled. This time it's better delivery and push towards the leg side. 
And they'll come back for the second chance at the keeper's end. But some good running. I'll tell you what, he's quick. Coming back for two there. That went out 40 metres to the deep. Let's have a look at it again. And it's fielded just outside the circle. And a good throw coming in there. Jack Carty, but couldn't beat the batsman. And the 100 up. So we've got, uh, what, 20... Six balls left in this innings, five for 100. McKenna lays this one backward a point. We've got two, two players back there behind point. So McKenna picking up the pace here. This is a good over so far. 11 from it. Pell now works it down to long on. Rotates the strike, keeps the score ticking over. Ends the over. And Carlton, 5 for 102, up to 16. Yeah, best over the innings, Bonds, 12 coming from it. So if they can get four more overs of 12, they'll get 150. And that's got to be the target from here. They are five down, but these two have been in for a while now. McKenna, 14 off 13. Pell, 14 off 12. Let's have a look at a little bit of the action from that over. Good sweep shot for six there by Lockie McKenna. They need at least a boundary, uh, an over here, maybe, maybe two. Maybe two, yeah, absolutely. A couple of fours or a six and over. A few singles, get it up there and that dozen and over. And, uh, you know, for the sake of this game, it'd be good to see him get at least 150. We want an exciting final. We want this to continue next year. Just interesting to talk to Graham Manu about it. A short time ago, he is hopeful rather than certain that this uh, competition will exist next season. Let's hope that excitement over the last couple of days will allow this to continue well there's been no negativity from what i've heard it's been it's all been positive and i hope everyone at home has enjoyed it as well wherever you're watching around australia around the world and just be back into the attack 17th over this is outside off stump and squeeze square just a single Good throw in there from the deep So Carlton, who went into this game, I would say, as red-hot favourites after their performances so far in the tournament. Of course, they played University of Queensland in the opening round and uh, accounted for them quite comfortably. Uni got 9 for 128, Carlton 3 for 132, getting the runs pretty easily in the end. But it's a different ball game today in the final. Slow ball, change of pace, well bowled. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Nice bit of bowling. And uh, I saw this morning he bowled some in the death as well. Bowled late overs. And he's got a good change of pace. Good control. Expect to see outside off Stump Yorker. Just like that. And that one's just a single. Nicely played there, McKenna, looking to keep things ticking over. Both these bats went on 15. And you mentioned Endersby, Bonds, into his third over. None for 16. Went for just four off his first. A couple of boundaries in his second when Golbus and Tom Smythe were starting to crank things up for the Blues. This one swung over mid-wicket. Batsman doesn't move. It's gone all the way for six. Yeah, nicely struck there by Pell. Got underneath it, had a little bit of breeze behind him. And that sailed into the northeastern corner of the ground, just getting over the rope. That's all it has to do. Foolish ball, wasn't quite that hittable length, but he made the most of that and uh, whacked it away, did Donovan Pell. So he's hit a six and a four now. He's on 21 from 14. And they keep this up, they're on track to get into the 140s. Two balls to go in the 17th. Enders beat from the northern end. That one down leg side. Called a wide. <laughs> Bit of delay from the umpire there. Yeah, Jerry Matabiri may have felt it clip the pad, but looked like it just went straight through. No real complaints from the University of Queensland players there. Enders beat just having a look back. He didn't seem too upset with that wide call. They've got one boundary in this over. Get a free ball here. Let's have another look. 
Well, that seventh ball is going to be the key now, Bonds, isn't it? When you bowl a wide. That one's fallen outside off stump. Probably might have been caught a wide if he let that one go as well. Yeah, I think so. There's a clever bit of bowling to draw him into the shot, and the uh, bats were just <laughs> off to the right there saying, would that have been a wide? Pretty much what you said, Bonds. So now McKenna on strike. Last ball, the 17th. Five for 112. This one's outside off, hit up in the air. Player underneath it, but it's gone over his head. Six more. And yeah, Tom Carty down there. Nicely struck. Second six in the over. And a good finish. 16 coming from that one. So 12 off the previous. 16 off that one. Really got to wind up on that one. And both these batsmen... Donovan Pell and Lockie McKenna hitting sixes in the over. So the Blues making a rally here. 28 off the last two. And uh, McKenna now up to 21 off 16. His last six delivery, 621.16. So he's really starting to crank it up. 16 off his last six. Three overs to go. 150 inside here, Bonds, I reckon. Certainly is. And we said they're going to need at least 150 to be competitive. It's a good batting track, fast outfield. And Nick Sale has one over to go, and he's going to bowl it right now. He's been very good today. Three overs, one for 10 in his spell so far. 11 dot balls in the semi final, four overs, one for 18 with a dozen dot balls. So he's had an excellent day today. Can he finish off with another tight over, or will the Blues be able to get him away for 10 or 12? This one outside off. Abishley doesn't find the field. It goes past to a, one of those gullies. It's going to run all the way to the rope. Four runs, valuable runs for Carlton. Well, Tom Carty, the ball's following him. That last uh, shot from McKenna in the previous over was going over his head at long off. He's moved to short third man. Dive to his left. Wasn't a chance, but was in reasonable reach. So six and a four off the last two balls. Carlton really going hard here. Five wickets in hand. 17 balls to go. 5 for 1, 2, 2. This one, a big appeal. Umpire says no. Might have, he got across a long way. I'm just wondering whether it hit him outside the line. Yeah, I think it might have been outside, pitched out of side of the line. The leg stump, Eloise Sheridan, they're having a, <laughs> a debate with uh, Nick Sale. Let's have a closer look. And it looked like, well, it's a slight angle on the camera, but that did look like it pitched in line. And he's waving the bat around. Was there a little bit of bat on it, perhaps? As that one goes over mid-wicket. That's six more. Well, they're starting to get together, these two, and pour the runs on when they need them. Well, that was a cracking shot. Donovan Pell starting to unleash. Great slog sweep over mid-wicket, down towards the Karen Rotten grandstand and the coffee cart. And the, uh, the blind cricket SA boys would have been ducking for cover as well with their barbecue. Back live now. This one played to Dom Michael. Current just a single. It's a good effort, this. Let's have another look at it. Over she goes. Knee down. Swing hard. And yeah, hits the, uh, the, uh, the barbecue tent. So, good aim. Donovan Pell, 33 now, off 19. He's off strike. Lockie McKenna, 21 off 16. And the partnership now worth 45. And these two have been batting together for just on four overs. Excel, and again, full toss. And again, hit well. And another boundary. McKenna, four more. Yeah, good cricket, this from Carlton. This is why they're the top side. Well, one of the top sides going around in this competition. Looked out of this game at five for 84. And they're right back in the mix here. Five for 133. Back live, and this one's worked down the field for one, but they're going to come back for two. That's excellent running from Pell. He took on the fielder, turned quickly, come back for the second, and ends the over. So Carlton now five for 135, two overs remaining. Well, they've, they've built the momentum up 12 off the 16th, 16 off the 17th, 17 off that over. 
45 off the last three. Here's a look at that uh, slog sweep for six by Pell. Beautifully played. And then repeated the uh, the dose. Or did time. No, did McKenna. And then we saw some good running down the long off for a couple there. Nicely played by McKenna down to the deep. And then Donovan Pell coming back quickly. So that last two runs brought up the 50 partnership. These two coming together at 5 for 84 after 13.1 overs. So two overs to go, Bonds. 160s on the cards here. If these two can manage to bat out the final uh, 12 deliveries. Well, we mentioned that it gives the bottom, middle, bottom order uh, a chance to shine here after Golbus and, and Smythe, Tom Smythe at the top of the order, failed to get going today. Don Michael going to bowl his third and last over. This one goes across the offside, works it fine. Won't go all the way to the boundary. And they thought about coming back for three there. Is these two are quick between the wickets, Loz? They scurry along. I haven't seen many threes in the uh, couple of days of the, this competition. Have a look at that one again from ground level. Didn't quite get a left bat on that, but the good running between these two going back for a quick couple. Thoughts of a third, but in the end, not on. 11 balls to go. Wide one. And this one played straight to cover. It's good bowling from Michael. Yeah, off speed there, Bonds. Good experience there from Dominic Michael here. Just got to keep a lid on this scoring. Five for 138, 12, uh, 10 balls to go. Of an important role in the run chase, batting at number four. Lachlan McKenna just uh, checking out the field. 27 from 18. Will he go over mid-wicket, the short side, or will he uh, look to go through the offside once again? Again, a wide ball, steps across, hits it to the leg side. Fielder out there protecting that area, so it's just a single. And he started slowly too, McKenna. He was four off nine, five off ten, then hit a six off Kurtzia from his sixth delivery. Uh, sorry, from his eleventh delivery to get going. So he's really kicked on nicely in this innings. Twenty-eight off nineteen. Pell thirty-four off of twenty-one. This time another change of pace. Didn't quite time it out to mid-wicket. They're going to come back for two though. No problems for these two speedsters. Well, you've got to almost have a direct hit in this situation now. Anything that's half a chance for an extra run, the batsmen have just got to take the risk and hope that the fielder in the deep is not capable of a direct hit. And every run's crucial. Eight balls to go, five for 141. Two left-handers in. They're doing a good job, these two. They came together at five for 84. Can't win all sorts. Another good delivery from Michael. Just the single there again. He's done pretty well in this over, hasn't he? Just given up the seven. And when the uh, the previous few overs went for working backwards, 17, 16, and 12, he's really um, stemmed the run flow here. They need to try and keep him under 160 here. Change of pace again. This one's in the air. Fielder went back and then came forward. Nick Sale, he started running backwards and then realised... The batter didn't get enough on it, and he dove forward, took a good catch in the end. I don't think I've seen that too many times where a fielder has legitimately sprinted back with the flight of the ball, realised the ball's going to drop in the breeze, then headed back. I don't know if we'll get a look at it, but clever bit of bowling from uh, the skipper of University of Queensland, and eventually Sale so, sorted his own judgment out, and McKenna comes off. He's played pretty well, Lockie McKenna. We'll have a look at it here. He's actually running back, and he's turned around quickly and made the yards required and brought off a fine catch. And that's ended a partnership for the sixth wicket of 58 from just 29 deliveries. So good performance as uh, Xavier Crone heads out to the centre. And uh, we have one over to go in this semi, in this grand final. Don Michael finishing with three overs, one for 20, and just seven runs off that over Bond. So a good yeah, finish to his spell today. Uh, really well done by the uh, Lenny Kravitz of Premier Cricket. <laughs> Did a marvellous job there in the 19th over for his team. Just pulling it back a tad. Carlton will try want to be up over that 150 mark. And it's going to be Tom Carty 
to bowl the final over for the University of Queensland. And he'll be looking to restrict them under 150. And the new player, Crone, will be on strike. It's the cross, so Crone will be facing. Pell's on 37. Done a good job. So last over. 6 for 142, the Blues. This one's worked away on the leg side, and there's no one there. That's four runs. Poor delivery, really. Just too short at the batter. Crane just had to help it on its way over the leg side. Did well there. Did very well indeed. Got a brisk 13 off three balls in the semi against Sutherland, including two big sixes out the back here on number two ground of Park 25. He's not the worst. Number eight going around. 75 in first grade cricket this season for his club. This one's forward. Again, work to the leg side. Straight to the fielder. Thinking about two. Good fielding out there. Yeah, it's Devin Endersby. 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 Yep. Yeah, he's had a good game. He had a good couple of games, actually. Looks good in the field. Three overs for 25 in the semi. And Travis for 30 today in this grand final. A little bit on the expensive side, but um, 10 and over in these sort of games is more often than not the case. So just working his field, it's Don Michael. He's going to bowl to Pell on 37. Four balls to go, six for 147. Change of pace, wide and called wide. Certainly was. So I have to bowl that one again. Tom Cardi. So 147, four balls remaining. 148, sorry. Let's look at the bowling figures there. Nick Sale, four overs, one for 27. Could see it, four overs, one for 33. Endersby, three overs for 30. This time, Edge over the top of that fielder. That's Jack Cardi. He's going to chase it all the way to the boundary, but not have the legs. Throw it over the rope for four. Yeah, well played. He's played particularly well here, Donovan Pell, coming in with his side in all sorts of trouble. At four for 67 in the 11th. And he's gone on here. He's played a very good innings so far. So we're into the final few deliveries. Of course, with a wide, the third ball, a seven ball over coming up here. So a big chance to get 160 still, Bonds. This time it's on the pegs and worked out to the sweeper. Just a single. It's a bad delivery. Just can't give width in this situation. Yeah, length and width. I think that's the issue here because uh, it's just that uh, in the slot zone and then width, obviously, to some parts of this ground. It's pretty short boundaries. So he needs to finish well here, Tom Cardi. So again, just changing the field. They've put the player behind square on the boundary this time. Yeah, the third man and short backward or backward point up on the circle. Swings away in the air, should be taken. Player coming underneath it and takes the catch. There's Enders beat. As you said, he's had a good day. He's looking up at the sky. <laughs> Must have lost it there for a second in the clouds. Yeah, I reckon he did. That one hit high by Xavier Crane to the deep, and uh, Endersby got under it quickly. He had to shelter the uh, setting sun with his hand there, but uh, did well to hang on to that, and he's pretty happy he did. So a seventh wicket falls here in this National Premier T20 final. Carlton seven for 153. Xavier Crane out for five off of just the three deliveries. So one ball to go. Here's another look at it from... Ground level. Just coming into pitch on the left there. Held the right hand up to block the sun. It's uh, good for all you youngsters watching at home. That's how you do it. Did it very well. Yeah, very good catch. Did go a long way in the air. Cameron Stevenson, the new man. He's going to be off strike. His role later in the day. He got four wickets yesterday. Bowled well in the semi final. Out the back. One for 25 off four. So he's going to be a key player in this afternoon or second session. So last ball for the Blues in their 20 overs. This one swung away to the leg side. Fielder out there will take it. Now come back for two. 
bit of a suicide run and give it out, run out on the last ball. So they'll take the one, sacrifice the wicket on the last delivery, coming back for two. So that'll give them a total of 154. We'll just see the run out on replay here. Swung away to the leg side. Pell. And he came back. The throw was a little wide. But in the end, Mitch Fry did the rest. Dived at the stumps, took the bales. And out by about a metre or so. But all for nothing. But a good score in the end when they're in trouble, Carlton. A good partnership at the back of the innings from Pell and McKenna. Sees Carlton put on a total of 154. Started with Golbus and Stepien. Nice little partnership from them. Power play of 44. And then lost a few in a row. Smythe went for seven, Ross for four. And then Pell and McKenna. Pell 37 off 24. McKenna 28 off 20. And they, which means that the University of Queensland will need 155. Yeah, 64 off the last five overs. Nick Sales, first three overs were sensational. One for 10, ended up with one for 27. Good to see you. Having a good couple of days. One for 33. And, uh, well, Jack Carty, great figures there. Says it all, doesn't it? Three overs, three, four, 11. So 155 required for victory in this inaugural Premier League T20 final at Karen Rolton Oval. Let's have a look at some of the batting highlights. Of course, as Bonds mentioned, good start to the power play with Stepien and Golbus adding 44. And uh, Stepien, a little bit slow to start. It's some nice boundaries. Golbus couldn't get the strike early. But eventually, when he did, hit some crisp shots through the offside. Stepien there using some ingenuity of, uh, footwork to get that one away down to fine leg. And then the wicket started to fall, Bonds, after the power play. Uh, 44 in the first six. And then Stepien was out in the seventh. But uh, these two played well. And then the uh, latter half of the 20 overs was a good, strong performance yeah, by Carlton to get to 154. Just some sensible batting early. They just picked their balls. They chewed up a few dots, but then they hit the boundaries. And then all of a sudden, the University of Queensland started to make some inroads on the back of this man. He got hit for one boundary, but then he only had 11 off the rest of his deliveries. Uh, just seeing some of the boundaries here. That's some good hitting in the end by Pell and McKenna. Yeah, well, they were five for 90 after 15 bonds, and we thought maybe 130, 135, but big overs in the 16th, they got 12, 17th, they got 16, and the 18th over, they got 17. Really cranked it up, and they got across the line there with uh, eight for 154, 64 off those last five overs. So good performances there from those uh, lower and middle order players. McKenna. And also, we saw um, Donovan Pell well, do Cal particularly well. The, the Carlton bowling lineup is quite strong. So, 155. I think they'll be reasonably confident that they've got enough to defend. Should be a good finish. Join us in about 10 minutes' time for the run chase with Carlton finishing at 8 for 154. Uni of Queensland need 155 for victory. Back soon with the run chase. After being such a great success the first time, it's time for Impressions Take Two. Uh, today we've got some real specials for you, so we're going to start off with my personal favourite, RTP, Ricky Ponting. He shouldn't have run, because he always hits a boundary every time he pulls. So Mark War, one of the most elegant players. Superb shot. Game was underwater basically when he was batting. So slow. Four through mid wicket. Cheers. He plays it so elegantly. Kevin Peterson, former Stars teammate. Probably talking on the mic. 
think I'm gonna try and play him behind square on the offside. So I might, might just look for a switch hit here. Reverse again. Oh, he smashed it. And that is up. glorious stuff. <laughs> and that is how you play spin bowling. Best rig in Australian cricket. Uh, we got Marcus Stoinis. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of him. As a bowler, you're petrified with that running at you. Automatically, he's going to hit the next ball for six. Indian legend, MS Dhoni. Um, unfortunately, there was a game where I dropped him and then he played this next shot and hit it out of the stadium. Felt really good after that. Oh, <laughs> six. Out of here. He hit it 115 metres out of the ground. I think it was off James Fortner's bowling as well. <laughs> oh dear. One of the, obviously the ODI maestros of the game, legend of the game, uh, AB de Villiers. Brilliant. Seems to do that unbelievably quickly. And then just beautiful batsmanship skills. I can't even do it slowly, so um, that's how good he is. Like any fast bowler, I've had my fair share of injuries and for me that's always been the hardest part of my career so far. I think each injury brings a different challenge. For me, probably in, I think it was 2013 season, I'd, I'd had, a, had a back injury, kind of got back, felt like I was bowling okay, hadn't really played too much cricket and then redid my injury. For me, that was probably the hardest one to take. I'd had a couple where I'd played some one days, some really good um, you know, tournament play. And if you get injured after bowling a lot in games, you can kind of cop that. For me, after not playing too much cricket and getting another injury, I guess I, I really started to question where my career's gonna go. Um, you know, you feel like you just fall back in the pecking order every time you get injured. And yeah, it's, it was really hard for me. I think the thing that really helped me was, one was university, I, I went back there and kind of did what my best mates from school were doing and um, brought me really close to them and gave me something outside of cricket to, to spend my time and, and really have a purpose for. Um, and my family are great and just, I guess, gave me a real perspective outside of cricket. Within cricket, I had heaps of support as well. You know, past players, current players, uh, Cricket Australia staff and coaches all kind of made me feel like it wasn't abnormal. It was a really common thing for a fast bowler to go to go through, and um, gave me a lot of certainty that you'd come out the other side and still have a hopefully a career that you know won't be affected by these early in injuries when you're only 20 years old. So it gave me a, a chance to kind of refresh, not feel like I was wasting time. Felt like I had some things outside of cricket, and also meant that when I was there at cricket, I felt like I could just enjoy being at the SCG, everyday training being around cricket, hanging around lots of the other players and kind of living through their experiences that season, hope, hopefully that I'll, you know, knowing that I'll get that chance later on. So just having that perspective, I've come out the other side, a better person, more rounded, but that, that was certainly a tough stage of my life. It was a massive build-up uh, to the, the World Cup itself, but also to the 
the semi-final and final um, up against England, who are really big rivals of ours. And um, the game was at eight o'clock at night, <laughs> which uh, I personally found really difficult to sort of uh, wait that long before we played. So the, the build-up felt like it was um, a long time coming. And um, I guess we were a little bit nervous uh, in the first few overs in the field, but uh, we were able to pull ourselves together. Maggie Lanning, the Australian captain on strike. They play tip and run, they get home, and normal service has been resumed. Australia, champions 2018. Yeah, it was just a massive sense of relief to be able to get the job done and um, be world champions again, which um, we hadn't been able to call ourselves for a number of years. This World Cup was about making sure we, we just got the job done and we were worrying about what we were doing and, um, yeah, to, to get to that that high, I guess, um, was certainly a great sense of relief and, um, yeah, we all really enjoyed it. We don't want it takes to win. Nothing can make this team give it. Yeah, look, I'm not sure what got into me, to be honest. I, I celebrated... Um, quite significantly, which is probably a bit unusual for me, but I guess that just showed the emotion that was involved. You know, we, we really just had a, a lot of pressure on us, I guess, um, to make sure we got the job done. And yeah, once we hit that winning run, I went a little bit bananas like the rest of the team did. And uh, Ash reminds me all the time that um, her helmet gave her a little bit of a, bru <laughs> a bruise, but um, I wasn't worrying about, too much about that. Again, one of my favorite moments after the game. Um, obviously, you, you sing the song and you, um, you know, have that real excitement. But um, after a little bit, we, we headed out to the middle on the on the pitch, which you don't always get to do. Um, and we were just having a, a drink and um, also just, just chatting between each, ourselves um, about our sort of reflections on the game and, and the past year or so. Um, and they're the sort of moments I guess you remember for a long time is just soaking it all in. Um, I think all the crowd had left. Um, the scoreboard was still up with the, the score. And um, yeah, it was just about making sure we were making the most of, of a great win. And we're into the home stretch of the National Premier T20 Championships here at Cairn Rolton Oval. There's the beautiful new grandstand here, and we're looking forward to this run chase. Carlton batted first after being sent in by Uni of Queensland, and in the final they made eight for 154. They were struggling with five overs to go, but managed to pick up 64 runs, largely thanks to Donovan Pell, 43 of 27. That was a fine performance from him and also Lachlan McKenna with his 28 off of 20 and a couple of 20s at the top of the order from Golbus and Stepien but uh, problems in the middle order and uh, we've got the bowling card Jen but uh, I thought Jack Carty with his 3 for 11 and Nick Sale, three overs, one for ten at one stage. Went for seven in off his last, but they were the pick, weren't they? They definitely were. You spot on with that. And look, those last five overs of uh, Carlton's innings was where the game changed. As you mentioned, 64 off that last five overs. Exceptional batting at the end there. And they'd lost their key batters early. So 154, 155 to get for Uni of Queensland to lift the trophy. And uh, we think... All three games previously, mate, they've been the team batting second has, has ended up getting the job done. This will be at around the highest score that they've had to get batting second. So 155 is a it's a decent chase. Two quality teams having made it this far. Very excited to see how this plays out. It's gonna be Aaron Smiley to bowl. Jack Carter to Jack Cardi to face up. Carty getting 11 off 16 in the semi. Aaron Smiley, we saw him yesterday. And he's going to bowl the first ball of this innings from the far end. And here we go. So the run chase underway. 155 to win for Uni of Queensland. First ball of the second innings. Down the leg side, well taken by the keeper. Diving to his right there. Nice bit of work there by Braden Stepien. And a wide call to start things off. A yeah, wide ball to start. Fantastic takedown leg side by Stepien. Had to get going early. You know, it's had three games, so those legs are probably feeling a little bit heavy, but pushed off nicely. Good. You know, some, that's what putty job as a keeper, isn't it? When the bowlers slightly get it wrong, you need to clean that up so it doesn't cost the big penalties. Second ball. Off the hip, they'll go away to the boundary. No long leg in position, so 
Great start here. None for five off of basically one legal delivery. And Jack Ducati gets underway. It was Smiley here. First up wide down leg side. This one he slightly corrected, but it was still starting on leg stump and then going further down leg and just held on its way beautifully. So he's going to need to shift his radar across and target top of off stump, maybe just outside. He's got to slip in place, so he needs to get it up there and around an area for an edge. Yeah, no grin on Smiley's face in this opening couple of deliveries. And it's in the air, out towards deep back. Good square leg sets himself. Take on, oh, at six. He forgot to throw the ball back up in the air. The fielder out there, opportunity. It's uh, Donovan Pell who batted well. Let's have another look at it with Jenny. What do you reckon, Jen? Should he have thrown that ball back in? Well, Could he have thrown it back in? Yeah, we'll just watch closely here. Now, he was already had his foot on the rope as he caught it, so he would have had to probably time a jump and then get it back. But sometimes those balls that have been hit so vertically, they're coming down so dead straight that it's actually, they're the hard ones to judge, to jump up and stop. So Uni off to a flyer here. He's going to go around the wicket. Slip in place. Shot out to mid-off, fielded there by Lockie McKenna. So they're up and about in the early stages here. Plenty of action in this first uh, three or four deliveries. Well, that's better from Smiley coming around the wicket has helped him to, to bring the ball at least onto the offside, which is where the you know, majority of his fielders are. So that's where he needs to be. Uh, the previous balls were all down leg or on leg, and they got punished. Five in the ring on the offside. Just two men allowed out as he tees off on this occasion. That's going to be six up over the mound onto the bitumen. Well, so great tactics here from Cardi. They are off to a flyer, Uni of Queensland. Oh, this is the perfect start for the guys from Queensland. Just depositing that up onto that footpath above the little mound on the edge. It's a really good hit. But again, Smiley, he's just angling into leg stump. And look, no one's going to be catching that one. That was 10, 15 metres over the boundary. But he has to change his line and length. He well, can't keep bowling there. Especially the length. I mean, that's just in the slot length, isn't it? And the player of Cardi's ability. Loving that length at the moment. Single taken into the offside. Good clever batting. Not getting too greedy. And already 18 off this over. The wide for a start, the four to fine leg. A couple of big sixes to the leg side. Yeah, and I like the fact that he was able to, to bring the adrenaline down there, Cardi, and just recognise, hey, you know what, that was a decent ball. I'm just going to push that into the offside and take the single. He's gotten off to such a flyer that sometimes you can see it go the other way, can't you? They just swing again and again and again. So... Oh. Really quality batting so far from Cardi. He's uh, taken a big chunk off the chase already, and we're not even through the first over. Yeah, builder of a start. The first six balls he faced in the semi-final earlier today, he made six, so he's doubled, tripled that nearly as Phillipson in strike for the last ball of the opening over. So the Uni of Queensland side off to a fly here, 17 without loss after the first over. Let's have, an, let's have another look at it. Started with a wide and then a couple of fours and a six. Good shot there, that one to fine leg and then the two sixes, Jenny. Yeah, really nice stroke play. He actually didn't overhit any one of these. This one was the closest chance in that uh, the fielder Pell had just gone over the line by the time he took the catch, so he signalled six. This next one, that was Bruce. That was really, really solidly hit. All on the leg side, those boundaries. Three boundaries to the leg side. Still... Yeah, from the earlier game, that was the short boundary because the pitch was two pitches across. Uh, but um, now that we're in the middle wicket, you know, everything's probably a bit more equidistant. But it's still, yeah, as you see there, these players, they're strong. The bowlers are quick. So if you get a get a hold of it out of the middle, the bats these days, the, the ball stays hit, doesn't it? Xavier Crone to bowl the second over. Three wickets so far over the couple of days of the carnival. That one sliced away down the third man. Races to the boundary. So Cardi continues his early onslaught. Great start for the boys in Maroon as they chase or attempt to chase down 155 to win the title. Well, the way they've started this chase, it's like someone's told them that they, they need to get done by the 15th over mark. Maybe they've got a plane to catch. Uh, but at the moment, they're not doing anything really risky. They're actually just playing the line of the ball really well. That was wide outside off, and he put his hands through it. 
Certainly did. 21, he's already got. Peel for leg before, pitching outside the line of the leg stump. And what this might do, Jen, we saw yesterday the tactics of um, the Blues in the field. They, um, they left Golbus and Stevenson, their two most experienced players, until later mm. on. Golbus didn't come on to the 11th, and Stevenson didn't come on to the 12th. So you might see those two bowlers involved early on in this uh, proceedings. Especially if uh, Carty continues his early onslaught. He's played well. He's had nearly all the strikes so far. Strike rate of 300. Cronin again. Punched out through. Backward point. Partially knocked down there. Smiley onto it quickly, but they're back for a couple. So, great start here. And uh, that's Tom Smythe there who knocked that ball down. Probably saved a couple of runs at backward point. Yeah, good piece of fielding. He just wasn't quite able to... to hold on to it cleanly so he sort of had to bat it, bat it down and it went down to the direction of third so the batters were able to scamper back for two. Two backward points there as well. Cardi on 23 out of 24 as a swing of this ends up at mid wicket fielded by Nick Ross. So it looks a good batting strip now doesn't it uh, Jen? Five for 90 in the first innings you wouldn't have thought so but uh, 64 off the last five in the Carlton innings and uh, already none for 24. We've only had 10 legal deliveries in this innings. And as as hard as it would have been for Uni of Queensland to, to watch those last five overs go for 64, the batters probably have said to each other on that break, well, hang on a second, this pitch back is, is coming good now. We're ready to go. Crone needs a wicket for his side here. Wide outside the off stump. Eloise Sheridan says that's OK, just inside the wide line. Just indicates there's one ball to go. Of course, Uni Queensland have had plenty of experience in finals over the last 15 or so years. They've won five T20 since 2006 7. They've won the 50 over competition in uh, Premier League cricket up in Queensland nine times. They've won two to three two day flags as well. So they're no strangers to winning trophies. So we've watched the last ball of this over. Cardi punches that one to point. Well fielded there by Eddie O'Sullivan. So the end of a better over. Just the eight runs coming from it. No wicket for 25 after two. Jack Carty, he's on fire at the moment on 24. And the other run is a sundry. Yeah, number 25 after two overs. It's some really good early going from the University of Queensland side. Phil Phillipson yesterday, he had a day out as well, day to remember. And uh, signature of, of his innings was just, oh, this is earlier today, these sixes. That's the first over, wasn't it? He, he got away beautifully. <laughs> oh dear. Our production boys get a bit worn out in the truck. We just saw the first over again, but that's okay. Smiley on again. 18 off his first. Can he respond? Hit on the pad. Don't think so. Oh, he's given it. Oh, I don't know about that. From around the wicket to the left hand. Uh, disappointment for Jack Carty. And a bit of luck going the Blues way. That one looked to be going down the leg side. Yeah, we'll watch the replay on this one. It's from wide around the wicket. Angling oh. down. I th oh. Yeah. I don't know about that one. That's probably doing too much going down the leg. If anything, it you might say it might have been brushing legs. So do you get struck outside the line of off stump, Murray? Oh, I think it was angling down leg, Jen. I have to say, I don't want to hold back too much here, but uh, that's unfortunate. You can see by the look on young Jack Carty's face, he's uh, pretty disappointed with that decision. And uh, it's just about impossible for a right arm bowler buying around the wicket to get a little an LBW from that angle as we watch the new batsman Jack Clayton come out. So a bit of luck for the Blues. They need it. 18 off the first. They kept uh, Smiley on. Kept faith in the quickie. And uh, thanks to a little bit of help there. Gets the first wicket to fall. One for 25 after 2.1. I think the thing that sort of undid the batter there was just the way... He sort of fell into the shot, so probably made it look like he got struck more to the umpire's eye, maybe on off or middle. So, but to, to you and I, I agree. I think it, that was actually heading down leg, and probably with the way this pitch has been carrying, may have also been a fraction too high. But that's the way cricket goes sometimes. So, Smiley with the breakthrough. 
So Jack Clayton struck on the pad. The big shout from the Carlton boys, but a leg by should result. And uh, he gets off strike. So we haven't seen much of Michael Phillipson so far in this innings. He's only faced the one ball. Hasn't really had the chance, has he, Jen? No, he hasn't. He's been watching Cardi put away a few boundaries early and uh, just at the other end while that LBW was given out. Probably had his heart in the mouth when they went up again strongly for the next shout, but that one was definitely heading down leg as well. So Michael Phillips and the experienced, one of the most experienced players on this side, pushes one out to cover. So the dynamic of this game can change so quickly. A wicket can fall, change everything. Jack Cardi off to a flyer. Despite perhaps being a fraction unlucky there. 24 off 12, strike rate of 200. And when you're chasing 155 for victory, someone just teeing off for a couple of overs can just get that target down and uh, back to around about seven and over. So Michael Phillipson facing Smiley. Drives up to mid off. He'll get off the mark. Yeah, mid off fielder there, Evan Golbus, the captain on the circle. I still wonder when Stevenson and Golbus are going to have a bowl edge in. That, that wicket would have just taken the pressure off a little bit, but uh, I'm not so sure they can leave uh, and have the same tactics as they did uh, in the game yesterday. Yeah, well, I was partly surprised to see Smiley getting a, another over as his radar was so out in that first one. Uh, Golbus showed some confidence in him, went back to him and said, Look, I know you can, you're better than that, so let's give you one more over. Charges in again. Clayton, that one just outside the off stump. Through the keeper. A little bit of off speed there from the bowler. Nicely taken by Braden Stepan. But we've seen in as even the semi final this morning that a team with, say, 16, 18 odd that they've got to get off the last two overs of their chase, it's very, very doable. So. They may have to bring in the experience of Golbus and Stevenson seems to be their, their player, their bowler most in form. Bring them in earlier to try and put this game to bed for Carlton if they can. Last ball, the over. Nicely worked away, fine. No fine leg, that should race away down towards the rope and it goes across the boundary. So four runs there. Good play by Clayton. So three overs completed. One for 31. Yeah, well, Clayton back in the team um, this afternoon after being replaced and we get a chance to look at Phillipson from yesterday's efforts and this was against so this is this morning obviously against Melville in the semi-final here yeah 49 off 37 played an important role in that run chase didn't mm. you Jen played yeah, well did. using all his experience been a long couple of days. I thought that was yesterday. No, it was only this morning. We've done four games. <laughs> We're in, well into our fourth game. And uh, yes, a little bit of general fatigue setting in. So 1 for 31, the score here in Adelaide in this final. Crone's going to have a second over. Michael Phillips in strike. Down the wicket. It's, it's an edge. Does he? No, he doesn't. Sort of saw a little deflection there. Well bowled. See, this is what we saw from Phillipson in this morning's game. The first couple of balls, he really moved around a lot and tried to come down the wicket. And we commented at the time that every time he came down the wicket, he didn't have any success in hitting the ball. It was on the move too much. Whereas when he stayed still, he was at his most successful. Uh, Good shout, actually. There's too much premeditation, I think, at times in this uh, format of the game. Just stay in your uh, normal position, and then swing hard. Phillips and edges. That'll race away down to the fine third man boundary. Doesn't say where they go. And he says, how many you score? And uh, that's a handy boundary for Uni of Queensland. Unfortunate one there for Crone. Probably just slightly too wide of his lines, but he still drew the outside edge, drew the miss hit, and he only... <laughs> It's a wry smile as he walks back to the top of his mark, knowing that he, he beat the batter, but unfortunately the scoreboard ticked over against him. Crone in again. Henley Beach Road right in. Short, popped up in the air, just short of the fielder. And will they get a run? No, they won't. A little bit of uh, thoughts of a single there. McKenna just couldn't quite get there. Seemed to take him a little while to pick up 
where that ball had actually gone as we see that just hit high on the blade and sort of bobble up just that one meter too far out of his depth so he couldn't couldn't get the big superman dive in so a life for phillips in there or a bit of luck i should say not really a life but well bowled crone and another drive and another boundary off the edge down the third man you can see the pace of the ball landing one bounce inside the right we had um, trent um, hopkinson from uh, the redbacks analyst department and he was telling us they were doing some speeds on these bowls on adelaide number two yesterday and xavier crane was regularly hitting 138 kilometers an hour so he's at bowling every bit of that at the moment jim but look at the carry on that one yeah agree 138 that's good good wheels yeah, absolutely and he comes again leg side takes the pad and they'll get a leg by you would think not a lot of bat on that one Umpire sheridan there on your left just uh, signaling an extra it's a cruel game sometimes cricket he's bowled a really good over crony's beaten the bat well the first ball philipson came down the wicket wild swing beat the bat next one outside edge so he beat the batter there then another great delivery short ball gets the top edge and it doesn't go to a fielder so he beat the bat again fourth one outside edge so he's beating the bat you know like he's, he's had it all over the batters in this last one playing miss into the pads t20 it's just a cruel game for he's, bowlers he's no. gone for eight eight runs plus a leg by and he's bowled really good yeah so fielder's just getting set for the last ball of this over jack clayton back in the side missed out on the semi struggling the first couple of games back in for paul woodford and we've got the last ball of the fourth coming up one for 40 and a call of weight and some sharp fielding there at cover by Lockie mckenna been in the game in this over so four overs completed overall target of 155 one for 40 here the university of queensland earlier eight for one five four carlton and as uh, Jen mentioned at the start of the, the second innings, uh, the chasing team have won all three games so far at this venue. And uh, after such a good start, they're in a good position to uh, make it four, four chasing. Yeah, they are. They've come out having a good power play so far. Still two overs to go in their power play. Just the loss of one wicket. That's a key component to the chase. Because we've seen here that clumps of wickets have fallen just after the power plays or, or potentially, say, in that actually sort of third phase of the of the innings in about the 10th to the 15th it seems to be where most of the weeks have fallen well they were number 44 after the six the blues and then after 14 they were five for 85 so those middle overs were a real struggle smiley having a third over that was a wide if he'd let it go but committed to the shot philipson punches it into the offside no run and Gulba staying with Smiley. Well, the game we saw yesterday afternoon here, he bowled the first couple of overs from the far end and then had a spell and came back on later, bowled towards the uh, the death overs. Just trying to get through this power play without too much more damage. In the air to mid off, the catch taken by Gulba's the captain. So a second wicket for Smiley and a second wicket for the Blues and the University of Queensland two for 40 in the fifth. Well he's proving us wrong Gulwis by sticking with Smiley. He's returned the favour taking a wicket at the beginning of the third over and now again at the beginning of the fifth. This one Philipson he was on the move as he played that shot ended up just check driving it so he couldn't control his accuracy onto the ball as you see him just sort of on the run on the move as he plays that ball. No control over the direction and just chest high catch to Evan Gulbus, who's too good. He won't drop those. So the end for Michael Phillipson, nine off ten. And an opportunity now for the captain to lead from the front here, Dominic Michael. Batting four in this grand final. Came in in the run chase of the semi final and ended up with 18 off 11. The only dot ball he faced, Jen, was the wicket that, or the ball that dismissed him. So he played well in that game. Didn't get a lot of strike when he was in, but made sure they got close to the target and, and across the line, which is important. Yeah, he played quite the mature innings. Obviously, quite a calming influence on the players around him as well. A bit similar to what we've seen Evan Gulbis play 
in his roles with Carlton. So just that experienced player. Luke Towers did it for Melville earlier in the, the day. And he, we had uh, Graham Manu on earlier and he spoke about that whole intention of creating that pathway, not only for players to progress through the ranks up to the top ranks, but also the necessity to have that pathway back down and to stay with such experienced players playing in this competition. Third man comes up into the circle. And there's a dot ball for Don Michael. So a long discussion there between the captain and Bilo, what to do. And we've seen often in these games, no fine leg, a man at deep backward square leg. There's the offside field. So a ring of five in that offside, no slip. And there's the leg side field, a mid-wicket inside the circle and some protection in the deep. So we're into the fifth over. 155 the target, two for 40. Short, pulled around to that man at deep backward square leg. And as the uh, uni of Queensland skippers off the mark with a single. Well, I wonder whether Gulbis and Michael would have crossed paths in their first class playing career a little as well, because you saw then Gulbis taking time to set his field bit more aware of his player he had a, he had a point that he set back onto the inner ring he's now crept in a bit backward point smiley again pushed out the point by Clayton that's the player I was talking about just there Cam Stevenson the ball prior he was right back on the the inner circle and as the ball was let go he actually took a couple of steps back so he must consider that a strength area for Michaels whereas for Clayton He's trying to hunt in and get in a lot closer. This time he's just asking, should I stay here? Last ball of the fifth. Clayton punches the cover point. Can't beat the field. Good stop there by Eddie O'Sullivan, who will see it decrease a little bit later. So they've recovered well here, the Blues. They gave up 18 off the first over and just 23 off the last four. Two for 41 off five. 114 needed off 15 overs. Here's Jenny Wallace. Paul Bonds are jumping back in for the next uh, five overs or so. Yeah, so as we welcome back in Bonds, who's been watching intently at the start of this game, the first five overs. Seems fairly evenly placed at the moment. The original start was all University of Queensland as they got off to an absolute ripping flyer, but a couple of wickets in the last few overs have stemmed that a bit, Paul. Yeah, it certainly has. Uh, indifferent umpiring decision, I must say. Yeah, the LBW. Uh, we'll probably let that go. Might come back to yeah. it later. Be best to let that <laughs> go. It's, run, a, it's effective run over it a dealing. few times. As we have Crone in for his third over straight as well. And this one just sort of checked past the keeper awkward bounces it was an inside edge and he came back for two interesting to see that uh Golbus has stayed with his seam up giving his opening bowlers three overs each quite unusual in this format well was this the side yesterday that you commented on that he went in blocks of bowlers uh yeah it was yeah, clever by you Crone in again. This one's just beating the outside edge. Everyone's getting a little bit excited. So, plan miss is always, always exciting in T20. Sometimes the keepers have a lot to do, and other times they barely have a ball come through to them, such as the style of the game. Yeah, just on occasion, Jen, I come up with a, a bit of gold that makes me seem intelligent. <laughs> well, look, I remembered it. I, I took it away in my notes, and this man knows what he is talking about. Crone. He's in his third over, as we're saying. None for 16 so far. This one beats the bat again. He's been he's been good, Crone. He's probably my pick of the two bowlers so far. He's beaten the bat on multiple occasions, as we mentioned before. Had a couple of boundaries, but they were from outside outside edges. So he's bowled really well and quick. Yeah, he's bowled he's bowled with good pace. You, you're right, and certainly the pressure's on the University of Queensland team at the moment. They've got to consolidate. They've lost a couple of early wickets in the power play. Last over of the power play now. This one just pushed into point. 
no run. A little bit of a cheeky shy at the non-striker stump. She's just telling him to get back. Can't help but be impressed by the standard of cricket here in the National Premier T20 champs. Xavier Crone, ball in hand, feeling confident. Looking for his first wicket. So Crane, Michael uses his feet, comes down the track, plays it up over the top of Gully. Come back for two. So 113 off 87. That might update, and it should do. I should go to 111. Two for 45. Right. It's the last one to update on the screen. <laughs> it's done me in again. To see the rain stayed away here as well. Blue skies at the moment. It's looking a treat right now. Crone over the wicket to the left handed Michael, who punches down the ground, just takes the easy single. Gold was using all his years of experience, doesn't bother to attack that ball. <laughs> <laughs> There's the experience head of Gold was just did not move, let the ball come to him. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't waste any energy. <laughs> It's one of those moments, isn't it, that the, the oldies in the team, the veterans, they'll, they can, they'll say to someone who questions them, they'll go, well, but that obviously was a single. I'm, I'm, it's fine. It's not going to go for any more than that. Right. But if a, if a young bloke in the team doesn't attack the ball, they'll be like, uh, what, what are you doing? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so two for 46. 109 off 84 balls is the equation for the University of Queensland. As we're here trying to see who will be inaugural winners of the National Premier T20 Championships. I'm looking forward to seeing this man bowl. He's been the pick of the bowlers for the Carlton Blues. It's Cameron Stevenson. Bowled with good pace. And an absolute wicket taker. So just Evan Gold was working on his field here. There's three out on the leg side. Goals himself will come into a straightish mid wicket. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be Stevenson to Dominic Michael. Down the track, change of pace. Dot ball. Dot ball, yeah. And again, just Michael sort of running at the ball. Wasn't set at the point where he needed to try and contact the ball. Stevenson was really impressive in the game we covered yesterday afternoon. Took four wickets against Dandenong. Four for 30. This morning, good again in their semi final victory over Sutherland. This time driven down the ground. Nice shot. Is it going to go all the way to the boundary? It is. Beautiful shot by Michael. Just lent on that one through the legs of his partner. Race across the turf for four. Really nice shot. Much stiller at point of contact this time. Really got his weight through the ball. Didn't look to overheat it, just ensured it was straight into the hard surface and raced away. Down the track this time. Lovely shot again. Back to back boundaries. For the skipper. Well, he's starting to feel good, Michael. The first one he played and missed. The next one came out of the screws, and this time he thought, I'll go back to coming down the wicket. A little bit of a shuffle, much better balance that time, and just pierce the cover field up. And you said back to back boundaries. Can he shoot for three in a row? one short pulled as protection out there so the third boundary doesn't come Be happy with the single it's like a favorite bat of Dominic Michael it does Bit isn't it tape on that one it's been holding on to that trying to get that just one extra innings out of it it's funny how that happens yet then sometimes you get a new bat and you just don't immediately take to it
worked onto the offside. Jack Clayton. Yeah, this level, I, think, I guess, batters at, uh, at Premier League level, probably a couple of them would have four or five bats, maybe a couple of them, two or three. Unlike the uh, international guys, who, they don't like a bat, and they just hand it on to someone else and go, yeah. <laughs> go down and see Mr. Kookaburra or Mr. Gray Nichols, get another one. True. And slower ball, well played, well bowled. And well fielded as well. Good piece of cricket just then. Short cover really hunting in, trying to stop the one, and that got belted at him and just parried it down in front of his face. So Stevenson, who's been a key wicket taker for Carlton, a little bit more expensive that time. And we were speaking about the work he got up to yesterday. And this is Stevenson against the rivals, Dandenong. He got the ball to talk and a couple of good wickets. He took, not only did he take four wickets, he also took two catches. So he had a day to remember yesterday. This was a good one. Hit straight back. And the last of the, this is his, his catches. We came swinging around made a fair bit of distance to catch that one this one a bit more i suppose a bit more normal a bit more commonplace sort of catch four wickets and a couple of catches it's a pretty good day yeah i'd be happy with that change of bowler there's a little lap there eddie o'sullivan into the attack for the blues and there's a boundary off his first ball yeah. Help on its way by Michael. Yeah, look, it's he hasn't done too much wrong landing his first ball. It's outside off, but Michael's just used his long reach, and reached out and just met it before it bounces. Got a close contest here because after seven overs, Queensland University of Queensland were two for fifty-five, Carlton were one for fifty-one. Look like this one's going down to the wire as the ball's pushed out to cover. So we want to see a close contest here. Hope you're enjoying the coverage on the Cricket Network. This is the National Premier T20 Champion final game. The grand final. Proudly sponsored by Fox Cricket. This one back and cutting. Can't beat the field. Well, Clayton's battled a little bit since he came out at number three. He played both games yesterday, four from eight balls and, and a, a duck, first ball duck in his afternoon fixture. Great bit of fielding again. Mm, very good. And uh, today, you know, just the four runs to his name so far. He's only 20 years old and part of the Queensland Cricket second 11 program. That one shorter. One of the single to Clayton. And sent back by his skipper. So this is the sense Carlton trying to hunt in on Clayton, put the pressure on him. This time he works it away, turns the strike over. Just struggling a little bit to find his form. Ends the over. Not a bad one first up from O'Sullivan. Costing him the six runs. And Uni of Queensland, two for 61. Yeah, well, as you were beginning to say, it's pretty evenly poised here, Karen Rolton Oval. There's a great grandstand that was only opened fairly recently. It's probably its first full cricket season this year. You've got the other teams watching the grand final action from the balcony. That one an inside edge. It's going to get some runs here. Fielder's going to come around and cut it off just inside the boundary. And just the two for Clayton. Just looks a bit out of sorts. At the moment is Jack Clayton. He's Struggled a little bit for his touch so far. Maybe try, still trying to get... He hasn't faced a lot of balls in the tournament so far, so trying to get used to these Adelaide conditions. That one struck on the pad. 
probably pitched outside the line of leg stump. Snuck through for the leg bite. It was a good shout. We'll give this a, a ponder on replay. Yeah, I think you're right. Might have just pitched outside leg. Carrying on to hit the stumps. I know you hear, like, say, a Dirk Nannis talking and, and he gets frustrated with this because he goes it's, it's gonna bowl him like if he misses that that's bowled him all ends up but because of that little change in the rules well not change of that little uniqueness in the rules if it pitches outside leg stump that can't be given LB well sorry I'm, it shouldn't be given LB I'm, I'm with Dirk yeah. the bowler. there's no question but we all know it's a batter's game <laughs> Stevenson again That one worked down to the long off. Again, just a single. Michael doing a good job of rotating the strike here. And this is where it's important for Clayton to return that favour. Can't soak up too many dot balls. That's exactly what he said to his partner there. Just keep working it, mate. Working it around. Rotate the strike. Well, we know that um, Carlton, they back-ended so heavily in their innings. And that's one thing that Queensland Uni or University of Queensland needs to keep in mind is that whilst at this point it seems like a really even ball game after, you know, eight overs, both one for 61 and two for 61, it's bang on. Got to remember that they've got to account for those runs, that big runs that were scored in the last five. away on the leg side Good protection there so just the one and having said that this is where this next stretch of overs where Carlton just struggled a little bit they lost five wickets or four wickets in a row in these next six or seven overs only scored about 24 runs so if University of Queensland can take advantage of the next few overs don't lose a wicket and keep the score ticking over. We'll put them in good, good stead to win the first National Premier League T20 Championships. Ends the over from Stevenson. And University of Queensland, two for 66. It's just a reminder of what happened earlier today. Carlton ended up with eight for 154 from their 20. As we see the card... Evan Gould was at the top 28 alongside Steffi and 25. But it was all the way down the bottom where the action really took place as Donovan Pell, 43 off just the 27 balls face with three fours and two sixes. He combined with McKenna, who was 28 off 20 balls. The one four and two boundary sixes. That was where the damage got done. And as I said, eight for 154 as we cross back to the action. Lee Sullivan in his second over with uh, 155 needed for victory for University of Queensland. It's going down to the wire, Jen. It's just what we want to see. Nice close contest. I love a thriller. Short a quicker one. Only very sensibly at the moment is the captain. Well, he's, he's key to, to anchoring this innings, I feel. You know that he can go up a gear. Down the track this time. Called two straight away. At the end, settled on one. Yeah, for mine, Don Michael, it will be the... the real key to a successful chase. And for Carlton, the key to, is to get him out. Oh, I tried the little reverse sweep. There is Michael. He's working the ball really well around the field. And then tries something out of the box. Mm. Well kept by Stepien. It's difficult to, to stay low and stay in the, in the ball when everything's happening in front of you. But I think that's the better option, the, the cover drive. Absolutely. Right in the middle of the bat. He's obviously feeling comfortable out there. Dominic Michael. At the other end, Jack Clayton. 
the moment just keeps hitting it to the field. This time he drives. That's better. Picks up a single, rotates the strike. Ends the over. And two for 74, University Queensland. At the halfway mark, they require 85, sorry, 84 off 60 deliveries. As Laurie Colliver jumps back in the box. A little white hut you can see on your screen next to the scoreboard there. <laughs> it's a wave loss. <laughs> and a good crowd here to watch this final. Stevenson in again, whips this to the leg side. This is Michael. Sorry, that's uh, Clayton. So 84 off 60 bonds. I reckon uh, I'm keen on Carlton at this stage. Clayton, 20 balls for his dozen. <clears throat> Pardon me, 20 balls for his dozen. Stevenson, who we saw yesterday pick up four wickets bowling through these middle overs. Very handy campaigner. Oh, that one doesn't quite get it, Michael. <laughs> Plays a little bit of footwork just to try and push it out of the way. Has a nice big grin on his face here. A little bit of frustration here for Michael. He was 20 off 14 bonds. He's only got three singles of his last six deliveries. So the pressure just building here on the captain. 83 required off 58. Need to kind of attack one of these bowlers, but which one is it going to be? Well, they need a big over, don't they? Some good bowling again from Stevenson. And this is one of the other skills of T20 is when you've got a batsman that you know is a class player like Michael, it's actually worth getting him off strike. Give him a single and get the less experienced player back facing. We know Stevenson's a class cricketer at this level. I haven't seen a lot of Jack Clayton, but he has struggled here today. 12 off 20. Strike rate at a 60 in this situation. It's just not going to be enough. Time slow ball in the air. Fielder coming around. Not sure he's going to get there. One bounce over the rope for four. Well, as I speak, he's come to the party and hit that one beautifully. Just short of the rope, much needed boundary. He's occupied quite a lot of deliveries and he really needs to finish off here if uh, the Uni of Queensland are going to get over the line. Pick the gap in the field. Nick Ross running around, just couldn't get there in time. So he's really got to go on with it here. Can't afford to get out now and he's got to really lift the tempo if uh, the Queensland boys are going to get up here. Drives through cover this time. Just the one. So seven, seven off this over bonds and they, they're pretty well up with the rate here. 84 off 60 so 8.4 and over required from the last 10. So a boundary here would be handy or if Michael can get a single and just uh, take a little bit of control of the strike here in these closing overs, then uh, Uni of Queensland be well pleased. Stevenson's last ball. This is the 11th over. This one worked into the offside. It's another single from Michael. Ends the over. Two for 79. University of Queensland. 76 to win, nine overs to go. Hopefully a great finish to this uh, championships. Dominic Michael getting a drink. This is Jack Clayton. These two came together in the fifth over with the score at 40. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. We've had a lot of fun over the last couple of days. There's the Uni of Queensland outfit there. Hoping they can get across the line, tuck into their yogurts. Yeah, it's been great to be involved with the coverage on the Cricket Network. As the skipper's about to bring himself into the attack, Evan Golbus. So we're talking about back ending the games here. And uh, these two experienced players seem to like to bowl late in the game. Good two overs from O'Sullivan, two bon uh, bonds there. Two overs for 11. Yep. Did a good job with his... Uh, Overs there. Didn't give up more than just the one boundary. 
So two inside the, or one inside the circle on the leg side. Mid off up. 76 to win. 54 balls to go. Michael goes over the offside out towards the cover boundary. And no chance there for Tom Smythe. So is this the signal for the Uni of Queensland to start having a go here and get a big over? Good what footwork type? and smacked it away nicely. Well, what type of shot was that? He just came down, punched it, was hit with power over the top of cover. A baseball swat. Great shot. Golbers, what will he respond with? Straight down the ground goes. Michael lands just inside the rope and flicked back nicely there by Donovan Powell and the comeback for a second. Good bit of work there. Well, it looks like Michael's decided now's the time to go. 12 overs gone. And if you can take Evan, Gol Evan Golbus down here, it's going to go a long way towards the University of Queensland taking the title. Pell did well there, didn't he? Excellent work from Pell. He's a speedster. We saw him running between the wickets earlier. Leg side, worked around the corner. Will they get two? They're going to take the fielder on here. No, they won't. Good strong arm. Nick Ross, and he did well. Kept it to just the single. And uh, from a Blues point of view, Bonds, all the Victorians watching it at home, they'll be happy to see Clayton back on strike. Can they draw him up? As they have a fair bit in this inning so far. It's an important moment of the game because this is where Carlton just struggled a little bit. Yes, they came on strong, had some good overs towards the back end. But this is where they lost a few wickets. So University of Queensland can take advantage here and score some good runs in these middle overs. They'll be on their way. Golbus in again. Clayton does well, gets it down to third man. Can they get a couple? Stevenson down there. Got a pretty good arm. And another run. So eight runs in this over so far. Golbus. Clayton just slipped at the non-strikers there. Good spot. So 68 runs required. 50 balls to go. Dominic Michael, 32 off 25. Two balls to go on this, the 12th over. Nicely played, down to third man. Stevenson again. And a little bit of wind down here. Might have impacted that throw. Bit of swing. Cameron Stevenson suggesting with the throw. I think it's just good to see the sun out. Even though there is a little bit of wind now. Wind's picked up, definitely. Now, what's the result we want here from a Blues point of view? Do they want a, a single to get Clayton back on strike? What do you reckon, Bonds? Quickly? I think they'd love that. Yeah, I reckon you might be right. So, last ball this over. 67 off 49. Up she goes. Straight up in the air. Who's underneath at the keeper? And the catch is taken. So the third wicket falls. Clayton on his way. Well taken there by Braden Stepien. And the University of Queensland now three for 88 after 12 overs. Well, a much needed wicket for the Carlton team just when these two were starting to go. Again, aggressive shot from Clayton. All he could manage to do was sky the ball and the safe gloves of Stepien underneath it. And a wicket for Evan Golbus. He's had a good tournament, the skipper, with bat and ball. Not bringing himself on till the 12th over. So the equation now, 67 from 48, as Ben Davis makes his way onto the field of play. Nicely held there by the keeper. There he is, Davis. And I would say he'll be on strike, perhaps, given that um, they would have crossed. We'll wait and see. Does look that way. And the new batsman facing straight away. And as we discussed yesterday, these uh, Blues tactics of bowling spells, if you like, in T20. Mm. Yesterday we saw Chrome bowled two, Smiley bowled two, then O'Sullivan bowled three, Smythe bowled three, and Stevenson and Gold was basically bowled four overs straight in their spells. So similar tactics applying, and it is a working at the moment. So, University of Queensland just ahead of the game at the moment at the same time. They're 3 for 88 at the same time. Carlton were 4 for 73. If you didn't, weren't watching earlier, there was a big rush 
of runs in the 16th, 17th and 18th over for Carlton. So Davis facing Stevenson. He's going to bowl his fourth and final over. He whacks that out to deep point. Fielder on the boundary. Ooh, got a crook bounce. Did the fielder down there, Tom Smythe. Got one on the chest for the team. That won't bother him in uh, 30, 40 minutes time if they've got the, uh, the trophy in hand. And the Blues against Uni of Queensland. Michael to face. He's on 33 from 26 deliveries. 66 required. 44 balls left. Michael pushes that one back to the bowler. Nicely bowled by the veteran Stevenson. We talked about speeds before uh, Bonds. I think he was up in the 130s with his quicker ones yesterday and the, the timings from uh, Adelaide Oval number two yeah. and they uh, does bowl a lot of off pace balls but then that quicker one yeah, up over the 130 probably mid 130s so good pace he's in his final over Michael on 33 what can the captain do clips that one away down to fine leg should be at least a couple chase down there with Donovan Pell and they get a couple so Handy couple runs there, and it keeps Michael on strike, and he'll be looking to face the majority of the balls for the next couple of overs if he can stay out there. And the Carlton Blues will be looking to see the back of him. He, out of all the players out on the field at the moment, he's the most important. If he stays there till the end, you would think that Uni would get across the line. Drive to cover, can't get a run. In quickly, Lachlan McKenna, who's fielded well in this uh, grand final, done a good job trolling that uh, cover in mid-wicket area. Again, you see a slight change of pace there from Stevenson, just rolling the fingers across the ball, not giving Dominic Michael any pace to work with at all. Look for a change in the field. On the leg side wants a uh, deep backward square leg just a little bit more around towards that uh, long leg so michael on strike short cuts out towards deep point we'll get a single and he gets a run so one ball to go in this over Ben davis will be on the strike so good over so far from Stevenson. Just the four runs conceded. One ball to go. Target down to 63 from 43. So Stevenson had a very good day yesterday, picking up four wickets. Done a good job in this final. Davis taking on the pad. They want a leg by. No, they don't. Both the keeper and the bowler on the case. So a great final over from... Cameron Stevenson, four overs, no maidens, none for 25. Went for two boundaries in his first over. Four off his second, eight off his third, and just the four runs off his final over. And the equation bonds, nine and over. 63 runs to win, 42 balls to go. And you're watching all the action live on the Cricket Network. This final of the National Premier Cricket 2018-19 T20 Championships at Karen Rolton Oval in Adelaide. Yes, we're going down to the wire. And the captain of the Carlton Blues has ball in hand now. Hit for a couple of boundaries in his first over. So Golbus. Outside edge, is it? An appeal. And umpire Sheridan says no. The keeper wasn't interested. Golbus was. And normally, if a keeper's going to appeal, it'd be right there even then. But uh, on this occasion, doesn't seem like there was any contact. It's definitely a noise there at some description. Might have flicked the pad with the bat. It's an excellent decision by the hump. Yeah, not flustered at all there, Eloise Sheridan. She's been doing uh, first grade cricket here in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. Had a good match so far. So Michael, 36 off 31. Under pressure here. 63 off 41 for Uni of Queensland. Oh, oh cracking shot. That almost goes for six. First bounce four over mid off. That went like a rocket off the bat. And a much needed boundary. No wonder he's taped up this bat. That has flown off the face. Dare I say it, like a tracer bullet. Out it went. A couple of steps down the wicket. 
and smashed it. Well, the skipper there, using his feet, went straight over the head of Xavier Crone at mid-off for a much-needed boundary. 59 off 40. As he gets that one away out through mid-wicket. Chance for two. Davis does well, comes back quickly. Throw to the keeper's end, but he's home safely. So good couple of deliveries here for the Queenslanders. Good running from Ben Davis. Called his captain back straight away. Turned. He was running to the danger end. This is where you need the game awareness bonds, isn't it? Set off quickly. Good running. And the captain, he needs to face as many balls as he can. As we have seen again. Full toss. They're hard to hit, those low full tosses. Somebody, Michael, looks straight at square leg then, wanting the full the waist high no ball. Don't know if that was the case. And when you're charging too, that takes yeah. that part of it out of the equation. Unless it's head high or chest high. Gold was having a bit of a giggle there. <laughs> As you would. A bit of banter. Good to see. So the equation now, 56 from 38. The differential between runs and balls is 18. So Davis is going to have to come in here and try and hit some boundaries, I think. Just take the pressure off in this run chase. He's got plenty of tape on that bat of his as well. Outside the off stump. Punched out to cover. Good of there by Aaron Smiley. who went for 18 off the first over and responded well in his next two overs, picking up two wickets for just six. Yeah, great comeback. From Smiley. So, three for 99. Last ball coming up at the 14th over. Pulls out towards wide long on. A chase down there for Donovan Pell. And not a bad result there. Gets a couple. A little bit of lazy running there from Davis. But uh, just the two runs conceded. So nine off that over. Three down for 101. So 54 runs required. And they did get nine off that over, Bond. So they needed nine and over at the start of the over. And they still need nine and over. That's it. Again, it's just solid batting. Pick up a boundary. Some hard running per over. And they'll get the job done. Now with Stevenson bowling his four overs. We'll have a change in the attack. Looks like Eddie O'Sullivan. Two overs from the Henley Beach Road end. He's now switched ends. Coming from the hospital end. One for 23 in the semi-final earlier today. And one for 23 or four overs in the game against Dan on yesterday. So he's had a couple of good games in this tournament. He's going to bowl to Michael. Where will he go, Michael? That's flat outside the off stump. Good bowling to the left hander with the short boundary on the leg side. Down the long off, and they get a single. So pressure now on Ben Davis. He's made three runs so far off four deliveries. And dot balls here like gold for the fielding side. Three in the ring there on the offside. Tosses it up, full toss. In fact, chasing there is McKenna. They get a single. So not a bad result there for the batting side. Absolutely. As you mentioned, Loz, this man facing as many balls as he can. 44 now. 52 off 34, the target. Boundaries needed. Full and straight. Beautifully bowled by O'Sullivan there. At worst, that would have been a single, but at best, a dot. Good stuff from the left arm spinner. And again, flat on the line of the stumps and quick fielding there from McKenna. So dot ball after dot ball. Pressure on in this over. 52 runs required, 32 balls to go. Sullivan doing a great job here. Has to finish. That's well hit over long on, and that will go all the way, and it's his 50. So Dominic Michael, a bit of pressure there on him. Two dot balls in a row, and he brings up the half century from 38 deliveries. Let's have a look at it again. 
Well, I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that's the biggest hit we've seen for the weekend. That hit the top of the tree. If it wasn't for a tree, it would have been in the front seat of a Commodore. That was a massive blow. And it's taken uh, everyone a little while to realise it's the half century. Finally went up on the scoreboard. I think they're just in awe of that, the power in Michael there. Yep. Massive hit. So 46 runs required, 31 balls to go. Last ball, the 15th. Full bunger. Smacked over cover. That'll race away for another four. So great over and a great finish to it. 12 coming from it. Michael bringing up his 50 with the six over long on. And O'Sullivan just falling apart at the death of this over, giving up 10 off the last two. Well, such a good start to this over for him, including a couple of dot balls. But the power of Michael and in very important runs. And the 15th over. Now three for 113. 42 runs required off 30 deliveries. We're going to finish up all three of us on deck, Bonds. I reckon it's the only way to go. Sounds fair. Yeah, Jen's going to get the headset on. So 42 off 30. Grandstand finish here. Pressure on the captain. Lose your money on, Jen. Well, Come on, make a decision. <laughs> you know I can't. No, You've I, got I think 10 they've seconds. been the whole time, haven't I? <laughs> Goal was in. Bowles, nicely played by Davis. Back with a point. Down towards the boundary. It's four. So six, four, and four off the last three deliveries. And suddenly... They've got a sniff of victory in this final. 38 off 29 required. Well, these last three balls, I feel like it shifted to Uni of Queensland. It certainly has. There was some good pressure building by Eddie O'Sullivan last over. Can the skipper for Carlton reply? In he comes. Pressure's on. Davis, thick inside edge, down behind. Square leg. Done well there. Got the strike turned over. So, 37 runs, 28 deliveries. There's the uh, couple of the Uni of Queensland boys. Nervous times. And there's Don Michael, the captain. He's played well. 54 from 39 deliveries. One of the bigger hits we've seen in the last over. And Evan Gold was the captain. The pressure's on. The veteran from Carlton. Nicely driven. Should get a run to mid off. Xavier Crone there. And a, a run. So six off three in this over. Early boundary is always important in T20. It just takes a little bit of pressure off the batting team. If you can put the first ball of the over away for a boundary and it puts the pressure on the bowler. Evan Goldberg has been here before though. It's going to bowl to Davis on nine. Nicely driven to cover. The catch goes down. Aaron Smiley. And that was an opportunity. They get a run. A low catch to cover. And that's probably one he should have taken. Yeah, he could. Uh, you can see the way he slapped that, his hand into the grass after dropping that. He knows that's a key moment. The wickets obviously bring new people to the crease. It adds pressure. But it's a vital dot. That's, that's part of the benefit of it you know that bowling he's bowled in a way that's gone straight to his fielder and he should have a got the wicket but also got a dot ball 35 off 26 there's a dot well bowled by the Carlton captain much needed too just look at the options left from a bowling point of view as uh, Smiley's got one Crone's got one uh, Sullivan has one and obviously Golbus has one so a real mixed bag of overs remaining in this final. Plenty of options at the moment. Be interested to see what they do. Smiley hasn't bowled since the fifth over. So it'll be interesting when he comes into play. Last ball of the over. Pushed into the offside. Good clever batting from Michael. Retains the strike. So no panic from the, uh, the chasing side here. Eight runs off that over. Three for 121. Let's have a look at some of the big hitting with Paul Bonzer with 36... Uh, 34 required off the last four. That was an absolute monster. 
It, it got out of the view of the cameras. It travelled that quickly. And then he followed up with a slap over the top, a cover off a full toss. And then the very first ball, the next over, cut behind point for four by Clayton. So it is going to be O'Sullivan to bowl his final over. 12 of his last bonds. This one, good delivery to start with. And again, he had some good deliveries in the first four balls, but then went for 10 off his last two. This one, cut out to the sweeper. It's good bowling. Thought about two. They're going back for two now on a poor throw. Oh, shocking throw. Went well over the keeper's head. And Stepien just lost it in the sun as well. So he fumbled it. Well, you've got a bounce throw in this situation. Jenny is a keeper. You'd know yourself. Uh, just stupid throw there coming in from that western side. This one's outside off driven. Hit well. It's four runs. Well, the skipper does it again. That's really interesting because he should have only got a single and then credit to Michael, the way he backed up coming back for looking at the two, he stayed really alive. And the moment he saw the ball was high, that's when he said yes and he ran, got himself back on strike when he shouldn't be on strike and then he hits a four. Back live, an appeal, probably pitched outside the leg. A dot ball there. Important in the context of proceedings. 20 balls to go. 28 runs required. O'Sullivan in his last over. Thrown up down the ground. Lovely hitting. That's six runs into the side screen. Dominic Michael. Well, we saw him play a key innings just like this to get them through to semi-final stage. And is he going to see it through to get them holding up the first ever National Premier T20 title. Well, he's kept his uh, head all the way through here. Two sixes and two, two fours in the last three overs. Proud O'Sullivan here. He's uh, struggling under the strain. Four overs to 35. Final ball is his over and his four overs. Gets a single and Michael will retain strike. So that makes it 21 off the last three overs. And O'Sullivan, four overs for 36. His first two overs went for 11. And he's really felt the pinch in the last couple of overs here. And we'll have a look at the throw from the boundary. The second ball of the over, Michael punching it out to deep point. And the fielder out there. Watching at the top of the screen, you can see him turn and keep watching, and then he sees the wild throw. Well, it was basically the non-striker Davis had just conceded that they would only get a single, but Michael was on his game, and it was a terrible throw. And they got a second, and that set up the rest of the over for University of Queensland. That's right. He then went and hit the next ball for four, and then a dot, and then the next ball for a big six. So a costly fielding error from Carlton. Xavier Crane's going to bowl the last over for this carnival for him. 21 required, 18 balls to go. Dominic Michael, 69 of 48. On strike. Good delivery, just pushed out for a single. They probably need an over of maybe three or four. Maybe, it, well, certainly need the wicket of Don Michael. Yeah, they need to get Michael out here. I'm not sure how they're going to do it at the moment. He's just got the game under control here. Twenty off seventeen. So Crane, what's he got in his kit bag here? Davis has done a good job. Ten runs off eight deliveries. And uh, partnership with 47. This one worked out to deep cover just for a single. That's all they really need at the moment, Loz, is just to knock the ball around and put the bad ball away for a boundary here and there, and the game's over. Yeah, those last couple of overs, or well, last three overs, 15 went for a dozen, 16 went for eight, and then that last over went for 13. It's taking a lot of pressure out of this run chase. 
So 19 off 16. Michael on 70, playing brilliantly at the moment. This one's pushed again. Rotates the strike for a single. What does Evan Golbus do? Try and get the wicket of Michael. Well, Crone's got to just find a way. They've got to tack at the other end here somehow and get Davis out or get a dot and just try and build some pressure that way. But ideally a wicket. And do you bring the field up in this situation? They're going to stick with what they've got so far. 18 or 15. That one again worked. This will be close. Bowlers out. He's hit the stumps. It's a run out. So there's the wicket they wanted. Lockie McKenna, as you mentioned before, Loz, been very good at there in short mid wicket. The pick up and throw gets the run out, gets a dot ball. Well, he set himself beautifully here. Knew he had the time, set himself with the throw. One stump to aim at, and he's out, Davis, by a good metre there. Had to go, though, in this situation. Plenty of wickets in the shed. Here's another look at it. Just set himself beautifully, and he's running out by a good metre. So this game not over yet. 18 runs required, 14 balls to go. And disappointment for Davis coming off 11 off of 10. But with that run out, Michael is on strike with 18 runs required and 14 balls to go. Well, wouldn't the Carlton side want another wicket here? And this man, the big number one. He's been outstanding. Yano Kutsia, the new batsman, who hit the non-striker's end. 18 runs required, 14 balls to go. Xavier Crane with the ball. This one's good delivery, full ball. Comes out to McKenna. And he just affected the run out. So Michael just coming in to offer some advice to the new batsman. Kutsia. Nothing silly required here. Six wickets in hand, 17 runs, 13 deliveries to go. Crone, who's bowled pretty well today. Four overs, or in his fourth over, no wicket for 24. 10 to 6 local time here in Adelaide. 17 required, 13 balls to go. Crone's last ball in this final. And it is a dot ball. So well bowled. That ends the over. And University of Queensland, four for 138, 155 the target. So Smiley has one over, and Golbus has an over. Let's have a look at the run out again. Great bit of work there by Lockie McKenna. Will this be the thing that turns the game the Carlton Blues way? Set himself beautifully. Excellent bit of fielding. He's had a great day in this final in the field. Fooling in that sort of mid-wicket and cover region. And he's pretty pumped with himself. One stump to aim at, did not miss. So 17 to win, 12 balls to go. Smiley back into the attack, hasn't bowled for a while. Over number 19. Down the track comes Michael. But well bowled by Smiley, just held it back. Going for two, there was another chance for a run out. Only had to be a clean take and he was gone. Well, I guess with wickets in hand, it's worth the risk. And even if that was a run out, Michael would have been back on strike. Let's have a look at it again. Michael getting a good start. And the non-striker there, Jana Kutsia, only touched down as the ball reached the fielder. He could have been in all sorts. So 15 off 11 now, the equation in this final. What Smiley got in his kit bag? A couple of wickets today. Find to Michael on 74. This one full ball worked away on the leg side. Off the pad. So good result for the Blues there. Just the single. Tension building here at Karen Rolt Noble. Hope you're enjoying the coverage on the Cricket Network. This is the National Premier T20 Champs. The final. Carlton and the University of Queensland. Just 15 from 11 balls now. School were just a ball behind 14 off 10 bonds. So tight finish in store here. We had a tight game in the semi. Gunnar Katsia, he's got to get something on this. Bit of bat, bit of pad. 
get Michael back on strike or even hit a boundary himself. In comes Smiley. Change of pace. Well, bowled. Keeper can't take it cleanly, though. So there's more runs here. I'll come back for two. Just those little errors in a final mean so much at this point. Well, under pressure there, the keeper just couldn't gather. Slower ball. Just bounced on the half volley. Unfortunately, the big fella couldn't get behind it. Two vital runs. Disappointment for the keeper. He's done a pretty good job. 12 off nine. Required by Uni of Queensland. Nick caught. There's a catch. And he's gone. Kurtzia caught behind. Another wicket for the Carlton Blues. Well, a quick redemption for the wicket keeper. And that's the nature of T20 cricket. One moment, you're feeling down in the dumps. The next, he's taking the opportunity there. And we are in for a grandstand finish. A bit of frustration there. Could see it goes without scoring. And, uh, well, 12 runs required. Eight balls to go. And Mitchell Fry, the keeper for University of Queensland, is going to come in. Of course, get the winning runs in the semi-final earlier today. So 12 runs required. Eight balls to go. There's the number nine shirt. Mitchell Fry came in under pressure earlier. Finished with 13 off of eight, a six to win the game with a ball to spare. How they'd love that now, Bonds, a six. We'll just about get them over the line. And uh, Aaron Smiley, three wickets in this final. He'd be very happy with that. But uh, chasing the win, 12 off eight. Exciting times. Glued to your screens wherever you're watching. One change of pace. Fry gets some bat on it. Thought about the second. The skipper sent him back there. Just one ball remaining in this over. And then it's down to the final over. Who's your money on Bonds? Got a hint of uh, the Carlton, as well as Dominic Michaels played here. He's got a feeling Carlton might get the chocolates here. Well, this is the ball that could decide the match. If Michael can get a boundary, they need seven off the last over. If it's a dot, they need 11. If he can get the strike, they'll need 10. Last ball for Smiley in this carnival. Swung away and caught! A big wicket, a huge wicket for Smiley and the Blues. And Dominic Michael has to go. He's out for 75. Well, Big moment. Well, a slower ball. He backed his game. Smiley. Slow ball, last ball. In the slot. Or so he thought, Dominic Michael. Let's have a look at it again. And with third man up, Xavier Crone calmly pocketing the catch. So 11 runs required off the final over of this National Premier Cricket T20 game. And a great innings from Dominic Michael. Great performance. He's all but led his side to victory. 75 from 54 deliveries. Came in in the fifth over. He's got out in the penultimate over. And he's not happy, the big fella. And it's understandable. All but carrying his side to victory. And Tom Carty comes out, the big fella. And, uh, well, what a finish. It's been a great couple of days. Evan Golbus is going to bowl the final over. 11 runs, and we could have a super over yet. Bonds, we could be here for another half an hour yet. Just to mention, though, as well, <laughs> oh, it's, it's going to be a great finish, whatever. Just a quick mention to Aaron Smiley. Got hit for 18 off his first over. He's come back and has the figures of four for 28 off his four. Yes, indeed. So Evan Gold is to bowl the final over of the final. Here we go. Driven down the ground. Fielder's there, falls short of him, and they just get a single. Didn't pick it up, Cameron Stevenson. I just saw him, uh, he's just to our right, and he just didn't quite pick it up. I don't know if he could have got there. Fry looking to go over the leg side, gets a single. So 10 off 5, the equation. And Evan Gold was the captain, taking full responsibility here. He's had a tremendous tournament. Century in the semi, bowled well. 10 off 5. Cardi, the new man on strike, get the score. 
And the stops over the top of Carver. This might go for four. It has. Tom Carty over the top of point. I thought it was a bit straighter initially. Well, he's picked his spot, hasn't he, with uh, the man at backward point up and a slightly shorter boundary. He's played that one perfectly. A length ball from Golbus. And he's hit it absolutely. Couldn't hit it any better. So he's got the target down to six off four, the young man. And they're one hit away from winning this inaugural Premier Cricket T20 Championship. Six for 149. The target 155. Golbus ball in hand. Six required, four balls to go. This one well bowled on the leg stump. They'll still get a run here. It'll bring Mitch Fry on to strike. So we're down to five off three. What a finish. Tremendous stuff. Good Yorker there from Golbus. We've talked about it the last two days that uh, the Yorker can be underused. Well, Mitch Fry, second to last ball of the semi final, put it onto the hill to win the final, the semi final for his team. Can he go back to back? What a dream day that'd be. Wouldn't it just? Winning runs in the semi. Can he finish this off? Five off three. Golbus to bowl. Fry to receive. Strokes it through cover. Straight to the fielder. Thinking about two, but there's only one there. Four off two. He was quick to the ball there, Harrison Smythe. Backed himself. So four off two. Three to win. Well, three for a super over. Don't know if I could... Do another half an hour. It's been a long couple of <laughs> days. Hang in there, Loz. We'll be right. We'll so be four, right. four off two. There's the Uni of Queensland bench. Kevin Golbus looks the calmest man out there at the moment. He's going to bowl to Cardi. Cardi on five off two. What's he got? This time outside off stump. They have to run on everything, but it's just a single. So with one ball remaining... This University of Queensland need three runs, two for a super over. So it's come down to the last ball of the tournament. Mitchell Fry hit the winning runs in the semi. Look at Golbus, he looks calm, moves his cover fieldsman around a little bit. Two for a super over, three for a win. If it's one or less, Carlton get the title. Here comes Golbus, last ball of the tournament. Potentially, let's as a super over. Well, Bowley struck it straight to the fielder. They've got one coming back for two, are they? No, that's it. There's a run out on the last ball, and Carlton are your national premier T20 champions. What an amazing effort from Evan Golbus and his team. Yeah, great performance there. They've hung in well, and they've finished victors. What a performance. Evan Golbus in that last over doing especially well to just hold out. Eight for 154, gets the win. And Evan Golbus, a great tournament for him. He came on in that last over, only conceded the nine runs when Tom Carty hit that ball for four off the second uh, delivery. He just about thought that um, they were going to get over the line. The final margin, two runs. So well done to Carlton. And they're the inaugural winners of this tournament. A disappointment for the University of Queensland who came so close to victory. Yeah. Yep. What a good game of cricket. What a good finale to the two days we've witnessed here at Karen Rolton Oval. Perfectly said, Lars. It's a, a fitting finale to what's been a magnificent tournament. And hats off to Graham Manu and his team who have put this together and all the staff at Saka. Nathan McGill and his team. It's been a great tournament with teams coming from all around Australia to this magic final. And I should just correct things. They've won by a run. So you couldn't get any closer in the final. The final run just going up on the scoreboard. There's Cameron Stevenson. He's delighted, as is Evan Golbus. And, uh, well, there's the final tail on the scoreboard there here at Karen Rolton. 155 to win. Just coming up short. And, well, nine runs off that last over. It was a heck of a finish. And, uh, well, we'll get some uh, words from Jenny Wallace hopefully shortly. 
But uh, what a dramatic uh, couple of finals we've had today. Bonds, uh, a tremendous semi-final. A little bit of rain involved. Union Queensland getting across the line with the ball to spare. And then uh, Carlton hanging on for victory. And of the four games in these uh, matches here at Karen Rolton Oval, it's just the final that the team batting first got across the line. Yeah, need to, and we'll cross now to Jenny Wallace. He's down on the field with the player. All right, guys, I'm out here with Evan Golbus, the successful Carlton skipper. What an absolutely fantastic match. Can you talk us through your team's performance today? Oh, look, we're just wrapped to get the result. It's been a fantastic couple of days and a great initiative um, to be out here. And look, the, the best teams all playing in one spot has been great. And that it has. And the last five overs of your batting innings, 64 runs off that five overs from Pell and McKenna. You must have been really pleased with that heading into your bowling innings. Yeah, the boys played extremely well and they hadn't had a bat in the previous game. So, look, um, it's probably an unknown territory a little bit, but the boys got it done and, um, look, I'm so proud of them. And uh, speaking of the team, what was your message to them as you headed into that last over? You'd just taken Don Michael's wicket. What did you say to the lads? Uh, there was not much talking. I was just hoping that uh, it came together well and uh, fortunately it did. And if you can just take a little bit longer, just reflect back on this tournament. Obviously, successful T20 year for you guys as a club. And to come across here to Adelaide, what does this mean for you and your club as a whole? Oh, look, it's fantastic. And it's great to get back to Melbourne. And um, the whole club can embrace being the best T20 team in Australia. So, um, look, that's fantastic. And um, it's been a great initiative, as I said. And so happy to be here. Oh, well, fantastic. And congratulations on being the first ever national T20 champions. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Evan Golbus there, very delighted Carlton captain. And he had the ball the last over, did a great job. There's the final shot, Mitchell Fry out to cover. And Golbus here actually had to end up throwing the ball to complete the run out, nearly threw it over the keeper's head. <laughs> and luckily, Stepien did the job and they won by a solitary run. Let's go back down to Jen with some more interviews, boundary side. OK, I'm now with Don Michael, the captain for the University of Queensland. An individual innings of 75 is great, but just wasn't quite enough in the end for your, your team. No, it was, it was good to get some runs, but as always, you just want to get our team over the line. It's a tight finish, but Carlton played really well. Um, fantastic tournament that's been put on by Cricket Australia and all the other organisers. Just wanted to thank all our sponsors and congratulate our team, as well as you know, everyone that's been a part of this. It's been fantastic. Uh, in reflection on your, your fielding innings, your bowlers seem to be well in control for the majority of that innings. And However, a 64 from the last five overs probably proved a bit costly for your guys. Yeah, that sounds pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, not too sure what happened there, but there's always a good chance that someone's going to get you know, a hold of a few runs. We, we tied down and took out their big players, I thought, really well early. Um, but, you know, these guys can play, and that's the reason why they're in this tournament. And they... From all the people I've asked, they bat deep. <laughs> and we thought we'd get a few sneaky wickets there, but they just, um, they're a quality outfit, so congratulations to them. And a, a tough way to finish the tournament, but congratulations on making it this far and being so successful in your local T20 competition. And uh, enjoy the, I suppose, the celebrations in a sense tonight, and, and well done once again. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and as I said before, everyone that's been a part of this, organisers, um, committees, umpires, groundsmen, our sponsors, our supporters, just want to say a big thank you for this opportunity. Um, and we've actually been getting along all right with the Carlton blokes, so <laughs> we might go for a beer together later. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that's Jen with the unfortunate losing captain, Dominic Michael. We saw a great innings from him, but let's have a look at both the batting cards, starting with Carlton and the skipper, Evan Golbus. Bowling the final over there, but we, he scored 28 off 20 balls earlier. Him and Stepien put on a good opening title. He was out for 25, and then a bit of struggle in the middle order for Carlton before Pell and McKenna put on a great little knock at the end. Pell 43 off 27, and McKenna 28 off 20. Saw them post a total of 8 for 154 lots. Yeah, 64 off the last five. And uh, we saw Nick Sale by well the last couple of days here. Four overs, one for 27. Went for 17 off his last. Jack Carty, what a good day. He had three for 11 off three overs. And Don Michael did well with the ball. Three overs, one for 20. So 155 was the target for the University of Queensland. And after 18 runs from the first over, you thought Uni Queensland were well on their way. Yeah, started on a flyer. Um, Jake Carty 
the Jack Cardi rather, got off to a flyer, then probably got a, a, a slightly rough decision, and he was out LBW. And then they just sort of kept up with the run rate along the way until the skipper, Dominic Michael, 75 off 54. He was the standout for the University of Queensland and just falling short by a single run. Yeah, great finish to a great carnival. And uh, Aaron Smiley, 18 off his first, finished with four for 28. Was nearly, well, was one of the heroes in the end for Carlton. And you look down the bottom there, Look at that card in years to come. Four overs, one for 35. Doesn't tell the true story. They needed 11 off the last over, and with four balls to go, they only needed six, and he bowled four singles in that last four deliveries, and the Carlton boys hang on for a one-run victory. So great performance. 154, <coughs> pardon me, beats 153. I've just about run out of gas after two days of double-headed T20s. And we might have a presentation coming up here. We'll let you know very, very shortly. But there's a delight at Evan Golbus. And well done. And it's been fun. A couple of days. Jenny Wallace has been fantastic, as you have, Bonds. It's been a lot of fun calling the action from Karen great. Rolton Oval. Yes, this is... Uh, it's, it's been a great part. And we hope you enjoyed all the coverage on the Cricket Network as we brought you the Fox Cricket National Premier T20 Championships. Yeah, big thank you to all our commentators, all our camera crew, windy and cold conditions here on this final day. And a big congratulations to Carlton. They've won the title. We'll catch you all again very soon on the Cricket Network.